and a great, uh, well, great shot, but unlucky. He's actually cleared his partner as well. So blue is not to the boundary. And yellow and red are both north of the hoop, hoop one, so are unable to threaten it immediately. Yellow may not be able to see black. Well, it doesn't really matter because black will play first. But red has something like an eight and a half yard clearance on black if it is to deny Ben the first chance to score hoop one. Ben puts in blue, and he, if he, I think he's got a wire. He can now prevent yellow from doing anything about blue, which in turn puts Mohammed under pressure. I imagine he will clear blue and hope that Ben misses an angled, a long angled hoop with black. Nice calm stroke. Ben Rothman is 35. Um, was one of those few people to be a croquet professional for some years, but now he is looking for more mainstream work. And he and his wife Cody have one child, Leo, who's two, and is among the audience. He's been the leading US croquet player for about 12 years at both Association Croquet, AC, and Golf Croquet in this game. Just hit the near wire. Absolute varying procedure. He stalks the ball, swings vigorously three times and then grounds the mallet, looks down and then takes a very slow backswing and then swings through without lifting his eyes until after the mallet has hit the ball. It's been very successful indeed. The two semi-finals yesterday were absolutely magnificent matches and Ben came from 2-0 down against Joshua Freeth, a very fine young New Zealand player, to come back to 3-2 and take his place in the final. Mohammed had a more clear-cut win uh, against Hami Erian, another 30-year-old Egyptian who does have eyes and has also risen to the top of the over the past four or five years. In 2015, Hami was actually the losing finalist in the Golf Croquet World Championship. He led 2-0 against Ahmed El Mahdi, who then found an extra two or three gears and won the next three to become the 2015 world champion. Now the one shot that might secure the hoop for Ben is the rather risky one of what's called a cuddle, where you just drift black so it's almost touching within a millimeter but i think he looks as though it's going for something more vigorous now what that's designed to do is first of all to get black into distant hoop running position due south of hoop one Ben doesn't expect Mohammed to miss his shot at blue. What he is hoping is either that blue might hit red, or even if blue is sent to the west boundary, that will only be 70 yards from red, and blue can in turn clear red to the east boundary, which is 20 yards away. a bad miss. That's the first time he's 
snatched at something, pulled it off to the left, and now Ben has a relatively straightforward two yard angled, 20 degree angled hoop shot. Smoothly done, but not surprisingly at some pace which takes him to the far end of the court, the north boundary, and that in turn would normally give Mohammed with red the chance to take wired position two or three yards south of the hoop with the hoop between it and blue. And although red is pretty directly behind the hoop, I think he can come past the eastern upright and try and find this desirable wired position. looks pretty close to me. Three yards back, very standard position for people of this standard. A bread and butter hoop shot, you might say. And Ben may find that having very deliberately placed black due south of one, he may actually be slightly impeded by the presence of the hoop in either taking position or trying to clear red. Sure he's not going to contact the boundary board on his backswing. Nothing more disturbing to your peace of mind than to know that there's something solid which you might touch with the mallet as you take your final backswing. I think he is having a crack at the hoop from long range knowing he can't disturb blue, uh, red, sorry, with either black or blue. the hoop and ah he could have hit red but just missed on the right That's standard tactics here for Mohammed to find a spot which for yellow which is wired from blue Blue is going to try that, just leaving a shot for, for black past the left hand upright. Blue has to see if it can deal with red, and I must admit I'm not sure that it can. What's happened here is that yellow has actually blocked red's shot at the hoop, so blue's just tried to take position and rolled slightly to the right, so it's a rather angled shot for blue, which might influence Mohammed's choice of shot now. example what you might call the inside game. He decided to clear blue and has done that but he's also lost position on the playing side of the hoop for red. So now if Ben is able to clear yellow, and I suspect he can just see at least part of yellow past the hoop, he is back in this hoop.
that's a bit of a let off from the hammer. You clearly can see something of it. It's just missed on the left and now it's a very tiny hoop shot from the hammer to make the score one all. in true Egyptian fashion. They tend to run their hoops firmly almost all the time, although he, in fact, yesterday in the semi-final was noticeably more interested in running the odd-numbered hoops at controlled pace to try and hold position at the next hoop. Of course, here there's no point in being particularly quiet with your hoops shot when you come through to the boundary. And there goes Blue into classic three-yard position, saying to the opponent, I can definitely run from that. In that distance, what are you going to do about it? And again, slightly surprisingly, Mohammed's gone from the inside position, which I don't think is that's short and angled. Um, if black were now to take absolutely superb position and yellow were to miss blue, then of course red could be smashed down to the southwestern part of the court and blue would be able to make progress towards hoop four. Ben's a long way away. I think he'll be happy just to be two or three yards in, in front of the hoop. He wouldn't object if he was four or five yards, but still in front of the hoop. In fact, he's gone for enough weight to make sure he reaches the north boundary. He would have been happy to hit red, but his main ob objective was to make quite sure that black had a threatening position as far as the hoop was concerned. Missing on the right. And now Ben has what should be a bread and butter three yard or even a bit less straight hoop, which he'll hopefully try and run down to within four or five yards of hoop four. And that's a sad miss. Red has gone too far if he's trying to block black, so Ben has an immediate opportunity for redemption if he wants it. The players are allowed to take relief if they do not have a level stance, and the collar of longer cut grass is just within range of his heels, so he's moved the ball forward and now he's got all his feet on the short grass. And a great hoop. Gone through by three yards and it's 2-1 to Rothman. Three yards back, pretty straight. Ben is probably a little hampered by the hoop. Can't tell for certain. Now what he may even be considering is rushing black down 
close to hoop four, so it can have a shot at the hoop before yellow does. Yep, that's exactly what he's headed by, and that does not look too bad. Not an easy hoop, but certainly a plausible one. Probably five yards at an angle of 25, 30 degrees. The hammer takes a view, he is going to let him have a, have a go at that. He's not going to try and clear him or anything. Ben is now considering whether he thinks yellow could run the hoop, which it clearly could, and whether it will, whether red will run, run the hoop rather, if he were to clear yellow, but I think he'll settle for the hoop that he's worked to get. Hoop four and five have a very interesting tactical significance. Players of below this standard regard being able to take position in front of five as a significant advantage. But when the players are clearing at seven or eight yards with such regularity as people at this level are, you can actually argue that the opposite holds and that winning four and having the shot and the ball in front of five gives you the advantage. So Mohamed Karam, from three and a half yards, and he's got it. Two all, and he will now have a shot, if things go as normal, with yellow, at blue, which should be in front of five, with red behind it. And then we'll have to decide what he's going to do about the obvious threat of yellow clearing blue. But the first shot for Ben, having that was just offside relative to hoop five is to send this into position so he creates the first threat. Again, he's gone for this sensible three yard position. Again, a bit angled, and it makes a shot with yellow at blue probably no more than about 10 yards. Hammond again comes inside him seeking to be in position to run if yellow is able to clear blue. Now Ben's choice is here either to put black between blue and yellow, probably about a yard away from blue in the direction of yellow, or to clear red, which has become an increasingly popular tactic in recent years. And that looks to be what he has in mind. interesting bit of psychology that when you're taking on a clearance and knowing that if you hit it well you have your partner ball in position to take advantage of the next shot being missed by your opponent it just feels so much better but when you've got no ball in position uh, it becomes much less attractive and that's why Mohammed has taken the view he actually tried to block blue running five but he hasn't succeeded so Ben is now left with essentially a free go at this hoop. I'd love to settle down now and begin to slot these sort of hoops with regularity, but he's missed a couple already. And that's a good job. Would have liked it to have gone beyond the peg as that would give him control of hoop six as well, but he would be 
very pleased to have got through by enough distance to have a free swing at anything that he can see. And I say that because the peg is going to play a part here. Mohammed will be well aware that if he can place his ball absolutely centrally, just south of six, it might be impossible for blue to hit it. Very good effort, and the crowd appreciated. But whether Ben can see it, I'm not sure. And that has been played deliberately. deliberately beyond the central line of the court to avoid blocking blue and red. I'm making the assumption that blue can see red. Now yellow is coming in and trying very hard to prevent Ben having this clearance shot. From the way he's walking up, he can certainly see something that is useful, and I think it's red. Great shot, and that is so central a hit, I wouldn't be surprised if red now cannot see black. And if that's the case, and black scores the hoop, the first advantage of any significance would have appeared with Ben then leading 4 2. By no means dis decisive, of course, many games have been won from 4 2 down, but nonetheless, it's the first bit of daylight and indeed you can just see that Mohammed says no thanks and we can try to do anything adventurous like block the hoop. He's just going to accept that he's lost this hoop and be ready to contest seven. Yep, no problems there. Certainly Ben looks as though he's now settling down with a couple of good clearances and a couple of smooth hoops. Now the importance of where red was placed was to try and make it possible for red to block black and yellow. And Ben is well aware of this and that's why he is not wasting any time and looking to clear yellow out of hoop running position with blue. On the nose, good shot. Although it does contain the danger that of course yellow can smash blue to the eastern side of the court. And now Mohammed will bring red in to hoot running position. And he's done it on the line of black to the hoop to prevent Ben having a chance of a rather exotic long angled hoop. Ben will now simply clear red. Ben is someone whose general approach to the game depends on hitting short and medium distance clearances in the middle as much as possible. He doesn't go for the hardest possible shot, but believes that he's got far better chance of hitting the ball 
if he swings smoothly. The Egyptians on the whole, though Mohammed Karim is not perhaps typical, tend to go to much for much harder hitting. Um, and it's not always successful. And on the courts as good as these and as fast as these, hard hitting is frankly unnecessary. Uh, once more Ben's taking the view that he'd much rather get rid of yellow from four yards than to try and do it from twelve yards with black. There was nowhere very useful for blue to go, given where red, red was. However, everything is now getting a bit open, and it'll be Mohammed who has the first chance to put a ball into easy hoop running position, perhaps a yard north. Now, what he will be thinking of doing is that if black doesn't clear red, yellow can attack blue and try and smash that to the south boundary and this time a bit of pace will be injected to make sure it gets there. Ben knows the danger so he's now coming straight at red with black. Just missing. Uh, the shot by Mohammed was red was just a fraction over hit. He was trying to get wild position and so it's been a, a little lucky to have survived that. But nonetheless, he's now got the... Yeah. This is the sort of play which char characterises the best and most aggressive players. They're not prepared just to keep putting balls in. They have a chance to clear someone from 10 yards or less. They'll take it. No, that will be disappointing for him. Um, he's got an interesting stance. His eyes are much further behind the ball than is classically taught to most people. He, his, in fact, he has a long mallet and his eyes are over the back of the mallet. And he has been extremely good um, all week, so I'm sure this is just initial nerves in the first game of the final. central hit to have red in a position where it had no real chance to run the hoot, but Mohammed will undoubtedly take this opportunity to recover from his previous missed kills. two balls miles away from the hoop. This is looking like giving Ben every opportunity to take a 5-2 lead. And again, while not decisive, it's certainly a very useful lead and for him a nice start to the final. Play black so that yellow has no shot at it. Uh, clearly, red will have a shot, but it's a long one. That part of 28 yards. Probably more like 
30 or 31 red and black it's a little bit unsettled Owen goes blue, so Ben is now in the comfortable position of having two balls in front and an opponent who's firing from, I would say, in excess of 30 yards in an attempt to stay in this hoop. Good job, this just middle. He hit that well. But just off to the left as he saw it. And this gives Ben a chance not just to score seven to go 5 2 up, but he should be able to run down a long way towards eight. going for the jaws of, and that's the risk he's just gone through. Um, just having a quick check, he's put the clip on, that indicates that it's now 5-2, but quite a significant change in advantage. Now it's up to Mohammed to take the first ball down. But I wonder whether Ben will think of his tactic at four. That's a good shot from Mohammed. That's five, six feet from the hoop. Ah, that was the rush. It wasn't clear whether he was going to go straight down to the hoop, but this gives him... That's gone six, seven yards shorter than he really wanted. So it's still very much advantage Mohammed here. It's got a bit of legs to it. Just gone out. Just gone past. That may mean that Ben goes for yellow other than the hoop, we'll see. Obviously had second thoughts about something. It's actually quite difficult to think of places where if black hits yellow it could end up um, without giving red every chance and taking a very tight position and still having an advantage. It's like going back to plan A and just run the hoop, make it 6-2 and for most purposes wrap up game one. No. 
and that's bounced to an offside position, so black will next be playing from the middle of the west boundary, assuming that Mohammed takes this relatively easy hoop in his stride. He's just a bit worried about where what red can, can see. But I think it's far enough south it can get into a good position at nine. Makes no mistake there. Five three. Advantage Ben Rothman. A bit narrow. Is it going to miss the hoop? Is it going to? It has just. Slopes away from the hoop at the end, but that's a long and somewhat angled hoop, but nonetheless it will probably invite yet another inside play from Mohammed. So the very good weight, but really just asking to be hit very hard up to the north end of the court if black can get into a decent hoop running position. That's perhaps four yards but pretty pretty straight. <coughs> so the only ploy that really works which is difficult to bring off, is to actually interpose yellow between blue and red. But if he doesn't manage that, or perhaps what he might try and do is to clear black, which is the bigger threat of the two balls that, of, of the Rothman side. Black is the bigger threat because it's much straighter on the hoop. Very good shot, I'm sure that will give him a lot of confidence. It's nice and smoothly stroked, no jerking, no, no snatching. Get it right in the middle. And this now gives Ben a dilemma. If he clears red, he is unlikely to end up on the playing side of the hoop, so it will be a very open hoop again. He could go for this angled hoop, but I think he's going to clear red first. Safety first rather than taking a risk. And there we go. And that's the problem. But now blue is some um, three yards, pretty well due north of hoop nine. And red can immediately put pressure on black by putting this into wide position from blue. If that is wide, the immediate danger. But he's eight, nine yards from where yellow will be, and yellow's gone straight back into wide position from blue, so 
the hammer is keeping the pressure on. And of course he has the option, assuming that blue can't disturb yellow, of trying to block black and yellow with red. The way Ben's swinging it looks that he thinks he can clip at least part of yellow. And yes, he's noticed that he's not got blue off the boundary, so it's vulnerable to being cleared by yellow next time yellow plays. So in comes red again. And once more black must clear this. That's trickled on a fraction, but not a bad shot. We're two and a half yards south of nine and perhaps two feet off the straight line. Another very good, steady, medium distance clearance. Now, Ben didn't take, didn't think about hitting hard enough when he cleared yellow. And now, this is interesting because a properly struck stop shot, slightly to the right of centre, can put yellow into running position and clear blue to the west boundary. And that's pretty well exactly what he's done. That's a good shot. And now, unless blue clears yellow, and I'd be surprised if he goes for it, red will have a chance to block black and yellow. Ben's come again. He's been on the back foot for, on this hoop ever since Mohammed cleared black with his second ball. But uh, blue can't be too far off blocking black and yellow, so Mohammed's going to have a look at this. Good principle in golf croquet, try and achieve two positive outcomes with each stroke. And here what he can do is to take position with red and try and block. And I think from the spectator's reaction, he's managed to do that. So although he hasn't given himself an exactly straightforward hoop with yellow, he's certainly given himself a chance. And he's won the tactical battle from the moment, as I say, he cleared black with his second ball after nine, after hoop eight had been run. Well, that was quite imaginative. He hoped to hit it just the right pace so that one of the two balls would end up blocking yellow at the hoop. In fact, it was just a bit too strong, and it's very easy to do that because you don't want to leave things being feeble and short in these pressure situations. But now he's given Mohammed the chance to make it 5-4. Really get back into the game if he can run this by some distance. sad outcome because he'd fought so well and so intelligently to give himself a chance and now Ben once more can try and con control things. He's calling the referee for some reason. He's complaining about the alignment of the hoop. I 
be surprised. They looked pretty good to me when I saw them earlier. Ah, oh, no, what it is, I think, is that there may be some slightly uneven ground, which counts as special damage, and he's asking for the a bit of repair work. So with the hoop out of the ground, there's going to be a short hiatus. Ben Harwood, who's the club's chief contractor, who's done so much work to bring these lawns up to a magnificent standard, he tells me it was a five-year project. And both he and the club are to be hugely congratulated for turning lawns which were, shall we say, fairly average, into some which are the best that those of us who've been at Southwick for many years have ever known them to be. And when you think there are 11 courts which have required this treatment, it's been a really mammoth undertaking. black, which is the ball that clearly has an interest in trying to run the hoop, is being checked against it. Ben has taken the opportunity for a short pit stop and Hammond waits patiently for action to begin again. Ah, great hoop. That restores the advantage, 9-3. He's not all the way up there, but that now gives Mohammed a bit of a mountain to climb. But that's a pretty good red.
against just sending the ball into position. Not bad at all. Probably can run as certainly jaws from there. Now Hammond will try and block blue clearing red. has just left red open so Blue at red and hoping very much that neither blue nor red clears black in the same stroke, which is a bit of a risk given how the balls are placed. Nope. And now we get to a situation which is always fascinating. 6-3 up looks a big lead, but if you don't win a 10 to make it 7-3, you get into a fascinating dogfight. Now, assuming that Mohammed will make no mistake with this, This is very Egyptian indeed. What he's doing is using the angle to advance red to close to 11. By coming off the opponent, he will not be offside. But what he's done is to take the view that blue is going to be unable to hit yellow. I beg your pardon, the black is going to be unable to hit yellow. Of course, he can see it. And he's left Ben perhaps a 10 yard clearance, which Ben has been hitting pretty well. So that was a deliberate high-risk strategy to try and gain advantage at 11 and try and rescue this game from its current 6-3 advantage to Ben. This is the risk he took quite deliberately. He knew that it was very possible Ben would hit, and that was a very good centre ball contact. So, he's, as I say, he's got to do it all over again. He could, Mohammed could easily have run 10 and made it 6 4, but just didn't feel it was worth it, which suggests he isn't feeling that confident about his middle range clearances at the moment. It was a bit like the hoop 4, hoop 5 situation, hoop 10, hoop 11, someone who's really confident of clearing from 8 to 9 yards is very happy to make hoop 10 and then deal with the opponent ball in front of 11. And indeed, in Egyptian tactical law, they even have the slightly extreme view that if you lead 5-3 without the advantage at hoop 9, you are actually behind for that very reason that you can expect to lose the next two to go to five all and then the person who won who ten will have the short clearance at eleven. Okay, so I have this clearing blue. and <clears throat> giving Ben the option of a six yard, 20 degree angled hoop, or as he rather expects Ben to do, to be content just to clear yellow. So this hoop will now settle down into a wall of attrition. Oh, 
Or maybe not. Ben perhaps fancies his chances. He looks as though he's going to take it on. So a six yard, 20 degree angle hoop to take a one game to nil lead. even from that from that range he's gone offside as well so suddenly there's a glimmer of daylight for the hammer yeah so four six Black will go to the west penalty area. That last hoop shot by Ben Rothman was arguably potentially pivotal because if he'd got it, it would have been a huge statement of his own self-confidence, which is normally pretty high. And the difference between the two players to date has been that Mohammed has looked the less comfortable on court. And if he had lost the first game 7-3, which is quite a decent margin, He'd have had a fairly immediate crisis to deal with, but now that Ben not only missed the hoop, but missed it completely, he's actually given Mohammed, I would think, a little bit of hope that things are not sliding away from him. But it will come down very much to yellow clearing blue, which is the classic clearance. And in comes red, just to be able to profit, and that's a good shot. And here Ben has a chance to get black about a yard or two yards beyond blue and blocking yellow. But you'll have to hope the lawn is very flat in that area because he's coming at a pretty narrow angle. And he's got the legs. But I think it's sliding off to the left. Yep, that is clearly open to, to yellow. And given how good red is, if yellow does clear blue, we could be in for a 13th hoop. Because red can easily get down to within close range of 12. about that got him right back into things but now he's given Ben what should be what should be a bread and butter two yarder and slightly angled to win the first game 7-4 Excitement continues. That was, by any standards, an unexpected miss. He's been running his hoops well. And this will certainly give Mohammed the message that he's absolutely in this match, irrespective of what happens to this game. Yeah. Worth pointing out that we're bound to have a new world champion because um, neither has been close to this before in their careers. 
so it's harder to be uh, surprised at if they find it pretty high pressure. Now, then play that quite possibly with a view to getting wired from red, and I'm just going to have a look at that. He'll have a shot at the hoop, even if he can't see black. It's obviously pretty tight by the time he's spending looking at it. And there is also the issue that if Ben thinks he can see black, he might just choose to clear red hard, hoping to take it into first corner, and so lengthen the shot by a factor of two and a half or three. Well, that's a good positional shot. Sorts of options, clear red, clear yellow, take position, run the hoop. Anyone who thinks golf croquet has no tactics clearly hasn't seen these sort of positions. It's choices, choices all the time. Influenced by what you think you can do and what you think your opponent can do. And clearly the red at black shot is just about on, but Pretty certain that if black isn't vulnerable to red, the hoop almost certainly is. So that's why he may think about sending red somewhere where neither of those, or certainly the hoop becomes an impossibility. And indeed, if he can red almost straight, there's every possibility that yellow will act as a blocking ball. So I can see why he might want to choose. Um, Oh, he's going for either position. It must be position. Or the block. He's gone for the block. And from that little fist bump, it looks very much as though he's got it. to see people get down on the ground to get a really good view. I strongly recommend it. This looks to me as if he's taking on a hoop from just about nine yards. But a rather poor miss, well out to the right. Now, if Ben hadn't missed a slightly easier 11 than this opportunity with black, <clears throat> you know, just said, well, it's routine, but he may choose to be cautious, I think he is, and it's just better to send this away and hold position with black. And if he's managed to get the wire preventing red from clearing black, that is a very good outcome indeed. Lovely example of the classic stop shot clearance. Black barely moved because he got pure equatorial contact and put
put all the energy of the stroke into moving the yellow. Sharp, moving the danger ball and this is the key thing holding position for yellow as well so that was a beautiful example of a controlled clearance it wasn't a wild slash having to move black come one way it was there to give him a chance that if this hoop has failed which is not impossible he can come right back into the hoop <clears throat> pressure being felt by both parties. So Mahara takes a much needed drink of water to compose himself. Now clearly black can clear yellow but might not hold much position for the hoop, so putting in red somewhere where blue can't harm it, because black is undoubtedly going to deal with yellow first. Again, Ben would like to have a control clearance here where he hits so centrally that black doesn't move more than three or four yards. But that was a bit angled and so, yes, you can see how the advantage of this hoop is now shifting gently towards Muhammad. He now needs another ball in. This now obliges Ben to move red. Again, it's only about four yards. He should be able to get a central contact and stop blue reasonably close to the hoop. And that's not bad. That's, he's north of Rover, 12, sorry too much AC in my time to forget the old names. It's another nice shot. Keeps the pressure on. Ben now has to clear yellow again. <coughs> and if this is a non-central contact, let alone a miss, it's going to put him in a very weak position. He's missed. No, he hasn't. I beg his pardon. Exactly off the line, and that now gives him hope because black has stopped within three yards of the hoop. And a good example of his medium weight hitting style which has taken him to the final and now here's an example of pure aggression he is fed up with the controlled game he now wants to put it all on the line can he smash blue all the way up to the north boundary He did make contact, but not enough of it, and so Ben has a shot where, again, if he can hit this in the middle, he'll have two balls near the hoop, and Mohammed will now have none.
Yep, the advantage has shifted back now. Although in Muhammad's favour, neither blue or black are on the playing side of the hoop. And now what he could do is to take position to the west of 12, wired from black. So I think what he's going for may have gone just a fraction too far. This means that, sorry, wired from blue, of course. Uh, now he may have got that. Thank you. Okay, Ben gives him a really easy position. And I gather that yellow can do nothing about blue, though it's very long range anyway. It's not quite clear whether blue can see red. If it can, it can hit it to the west boundary, that will put Muhammad under considerable pressure. So he's trying the clearance yellow on black. 23 yards. And that was a great try. And he looks appropriate. Mind you, where's it finished? I wonder if that has ended any hopes Blue had of clearing red. Oh, oh well, this looks inter interesting. Ben's going to try a split stop, which he does, and he gets Blue into potential hoop running position, but given his last two attempts haven't been successful, Harry could be forgiven for wondering if Blue will definitely run. So what he can now do is to play, and indeed he could think about aiming just right of centre and hoping for an in-off or a jaws. They're both are distinct possibilities. No, it didn't hit it quite hard enough on the, he didn't hit it quite wide enough really to get the extra angle, but he's kept red close to the hoop. So they've been going now for one hour, 20 minutes for the first game. product of a game which has had its fair share of errors, but given this is the world final for both of them, that's hardly a, a huge surprise. Just a fraction over hit because that's not in any sense a guaranteed hoop. So Ben will feel he can take on this Four and a half, five, yeah, four and a half yards, pretty well, dead, dead straight. This is his third attempt to win the match, or fourth if you include the rather long attempt at ten, which was a bit quixotic. This is one which, in a settled condition, he'd get six times out of ten at least, and probably more like eight times out of ten. And no, and this is not going to do him any good at all, although he's very well armoured mentally. He 
again. That's a rather sort of 50-50 shot because although it's got rid of black, red is 10 yards from the action. So, given that blue can't run, the hammer decides to try and stop shot black, so he keeps close with yellow, with black out of the way. It's not too bad, because even if blue takes very tight position, red will just come behind it. And it'll be up to black to decide whether to try and clear yellow to the far side of the court or to perhaps clear clear red immediately. So unsurprisingly, into position a little strong again perhaps. That's probably okay. And now Ben has his choice. Does he take the nine yard at yellow or the fourteen and a half yard at red or simply take position or conceivably block yellow at blue. This looks like the aggressive option trying to clear yellow ideally into third corner. Well, that's interesting. It's done two things. First of all, he has made the clearance of yellow on blue a lot more difficult um, because the risk of peeling blue and losing the game immediately is there. Secondly, he's brought black uh, over to near the eastern penalty spot. So if this were to go to the 13th, uh, with yellow clearing blue far enough away that it can't hit red and then run then red scoring he would have a fairly easy shot to take position on 13. Oh, that's well. Well, it keeps things going Both the players are arguing with the position of yellow. Um, now seem happy. Now, although it was a great shot and it did what it had to do, of course, it's left blue with a two and a half yarder, which again Ben should be hitting dead in the middle, holding to hold very tight position, i.e. within three or four yards of, of the hoop. And that's what was required. Interesting choice again. He's actually gone a very tight position, so he's pinning everything on yellow clearing blue to the north boundary. Slightly high risk because if you don't get position at all, you take all the pressure off your opponent and put it all on yourself. And then I'm sure now re reply in kind. that if yellow misses blue. Yeah, well, that's a good standard position. Although, given what's been
been happening recently. I can't sadly say he's guaranteed to score the hoop, even if he's left to take it with black. That's Mohammed Oda, a good hit here. Encountering what all golf croquet players know. One day you find it impossible to understand why anyone misses a shot, and the next day you wonder how on earth you do manage to hit shots. And it's just the effects of pressure. was a good shot, deliberately angled to try and lengthen the shot that, and I don't think he's got a wire, but it's remarkably close. But he's given Mohammed the, a shot which is longer than the one he's just missed. And if he misses it, then Ben will have a good chance of wrapping things up. Plan to try and make this the longest possible game one in the world final. They're doing a great job because um, yeah, that now gives Ben's working out the wide spot so that yellow can't clear black. And of course, this is the right thing to do. Your opponent is bound to miss eventually. In fact, Mohammed hasn't been hitting much, so that was a good effort from him. Long range. Back comes black. And yellow almost certainly can see very little of anything. Looks to be within a foot of the center marker. So he'll just, he'll just come and come down and join black. Put a bit of pressure on. Ben shot, which is the obvious one, is to try and get the double, the block, that is, the taking position with blue, with, and indeed he's marking it out with his mallet, that's where he wants to go, to prevent red having a shot at black. Looking just a fraction strong. a bit of a swipe. Now with two hours just, sorry, an hour and a half just gone, Ben has a three foot slightly angled 12 to make it one game to nothing.
Thanks, Brian. OK, we're back into the start of game two. Uh, Mohammed losing the first game, gets the right to go first, and so he's chosen to put red in. It's a 7 out of 10 ball. He's 3 yards back, probably 20 degree angle, so perfectly runnable. But here the issue is, does Ben think he can run all the way up to hoop two? And the answer is not with any control. So you'll see black now go 
along the south boundary. They'll try and stop it. Um, why is this a big swing? Is he trying to clear it? He's gone for it. This is paying considerable respect to his opponent, but that really was a very good shot. Right on the nose, although once again, because black is in court, it's now vulnerable to being cleared back to the east by red. So <clears throat> Mohammed now will be trying to put yellow in slightly better than red. Should have a better feel for the pace. This looks pretty useful. Yep, that's uh, one foot improvement. Another foot and he'd have been absolutely perfect. So Ben now has to repeat the treatment. yards. Yeah. Ooh, just missing. Well, the psychological balance right at the start of the second game is very important. Mohammed's desperate to get back into the match and to get off to a good start here. And Ben would like nothing better than to cement his advantage, although he'll know better than most the fact he might go 2 0 up doesn't mean anything for certain. Um, the players are not thinking about the rules. Um, he's entitled to move red in, but he also should be moving black in too if, if Ben agrees, as that ball is less than six yards from red. rules permit the length of shot to be kept constant so as not to give the striker an advantage. And Ben has now noticed. Ben has now noticed. So rule nine, the interference rule, um, he's entitled to have black moved in by the same amount that red has been brought in from the boundary. So, <laughs> well, I think you could do this perfectly well with a mallet head, but they're going to actually measure with a tape measure how far it's come in, and then they're going to they should mark black and then move it to the east by exactly the same amount. The rule is slightly more complicated than that because you actually need the owner of black's permission before doing it. Because there are situations where if you move the ball nearer the hoop, you might create an in-off possibility which wouldn't exist if it was left where it was. Referee satisfaction and bends, so the same length of clearance has been achieved. And Mohammed has a nice level stance. black will then have to be moved back to its original position. So Ben now faces his third 20-yarder of the last few minutes. 
a bit longer this time as he's further up the court. Seriously, just waiting for in fact, a group of Egyptians to walk down the side of the court. No, just missing. So, Mohammed now has a chance to. Start off on the right foot, so to speak. And a smooth hoop all the way up to hoop two. That's what he wants. Now it's, uh, pretty relaxed swing there, but no attempt to control the pace, which is probably very wise given how he's feeling at the moment, but he's given himself a brief advantage, and now Ben will be looking for the same wide position that was on offer in the start of the first game. That effort. I think he may just be open to yellow, but it'll be pretty tight past the east upright of the two. Hammond comes in to three yards. It's pretty obvious these players have got the pace of the lawn down to a tee now, and the quality of approaching has been really very high. Always three skills in GC, positioning, clearing and hooping, and if you've got all three going well, you're a very hard player to beat. And that's a good confidence boosting clearance. Not easy. I think he couldn't miss on the right at all, but he's taken blue all the way down to near first corner. Although he's still got a little test coming because I think red can squeeze past black and score the hoop. But um, it's not, that's going to test him. That's three yards. And he knows if he misses the hoop, black will just have a very easy hoop to make it one of them. Ben now is just going to be thinking clearing. So blue at red. 22 yards or so. Oh, very close indeed. Great hoop, great hoop, and that should settle him down very nicely indeed. When Ben recovered against Josh Freeth yesterday, he was going 2-0 up on the third, which
which set him on a path to recovery. Anyway, nothing daunted, Ben puts Black into classic position. Three yards and just a fraction to the east, but that's fine. Of course, yellow being down to the south has now got a free shot at black. He doesn't mind finishing up on the north boundary, and if he can take black with him, so much the better. This is now looking like a real turning point in the match. When the Hampton made a poor start to this game, Ben would have felt, I think, reasonably confident he was going to go 2-0 up, but on the contrary. Two hoops, including one quite testing one, and then a centre ball hit from over 20 yards. It's just what a player who depends on how he's feeling needs to get right back into it. So I think we should, with a bit of luck, be in for a real thriller now. And said that, that wasn't ideal. Not another request from Ben. He's trying to play for a block. What they should do is to take black off the court. Yellow should then play its shot, and then black is then replaced. I'm playing black at yellow, but I'm trying to stop right here. What I yes, what I don't know. They're both outside agencies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Left one. Okay, so wherever it comes, take the full. I, I don't think it's a fault. It's an outside agency, so yes. yellow would go back, and then we have to determine yellow. where black goes. That's why I'm asking yellow, for the rule. Yellow will come back on first. Well, that's and what I'm asking for the rule. And then black has to play as close to left as possible. Black has to what? When, when black connects, it plays. Okay, I don't feel like you're understanding me. I'm trying to get here. Yep. If black hills and it hits yellow, yep. does black stay where it ends up? Or is black no. placed where it would have gone? No, I'm not sure yellow what, where they've got back, to here. But if Ben is thinking well, about that's why I'm asking, do I have to play this with yellow off the lawn? Do I have the option of not we can actually hear off them. taking it off the lawn, as I'm not aiming at it? So, so I can tell you what Yes, he's then, then no. So basically, he's going to try to block yellow with black. So correctly, yellow comes off the court. That's the way around it should be. And now he's got to estimate exactly how hard to hit black. So it comes to rest, presumably about a couple of inches in front of where yellow will be replaced. Now, if he places black, so it's actually so close to the boundary that yellow comes on in contact with it, then it's up to Mohammed to choose which side of black yellow is placed. But if Ben has this more of the ball's width off the boundary, that won't come to pass, and he has played it like that, so he's going for a straightforward block. Now the referee will put the ball back, and if I think black's come a little a fraction further than he perhaps wanted, and so it, yeah, 
think he's slightly overheated. And this looks like clearance on blue. This is what you might call a null position. It's difficult for either side to get a clear advantage. So Ben is taking six six yard position at the hoop. Red will undoubtedly try to come in and just block it no more than a foot from the hoop. Takes a bit of touch. Uh, that may have gone three inches too far and black will probably regard this as a free hoop attempt thought about the merits of clearing red instead, but appears to have got, gone back to plan A. Nope, that's a poor outcome. He's got, glanced off the outside of the western wire and gone way down to the south. Billy, he could have a second chance with blue, and it all depends whether Mohammed can see blue with yellow. Yes, he obviously can't, he's just playing a drifter, hoping for a bit of curl in the lawn. Oh, is this, oh, what a good effort. A shot that's come into the top level of the game much more frequently in recent years is the cuddle, as it's called, or stymie, to borrow the golf term. It tests your touch, and if you can drop the ball a centimetre or a couple of centimetres just short of the ball you want to interfere with, they're left in an impossible position. And even this is going to be not too difficult, too easy, sorry, because it, there must be a risk of the mammoth glancing yellow, though I think he's just far enough to be able to put it out of his mind. No, he's chosen for the, for the clearance. So we could be in for another lengthy battle here.
So Black's now coming back from the long range, just hoping to take a position at the hoop and make Red and Yellow do something, and that could be extremely good. That might well be blocking Yellow at the hoop. Interesting choice. Presumably, blue can't see red. So what he's thinking of is the next two. And if he does run three, he's put yellow so that black, which will follow red, will not have any useful shot down to hoop, hoop four. Now that's predicated on blue not being able to interfere, or maybe blue is going to interfere with that plan. So he'll accept that he's lost the hoop. Yep, that's what it was. So two nice bits of thinking from both players. Mohammed thinking ahead, and Ben realising that he was thinking ahead and promptly preventing him from gaining the advantage he was seeking. But now Mohammed has to run angled four and a half footer. Yep. Oh, and very nearly two hoops in one. So, 2 1, first time he's led and in anything. And it's now up to Ben to try and take advantage of the fact that red is on the south boundary and so vulnerable to a wire. Score now at 3 0. Mohammed has made the sort of start he so desperately needed. And the true test of whether he's back in his groove is whether his hitting reaches the heights it did yesterday, which was truly very impressive indeed. And he and his defeated opponent, Hammy Arian, gave one of the best displays of counter hitting across Hoop 12 in game, games 2 and 3 which I've seen for a long time. Now it seems pretty obvious to me that providing he hasn't blocked himself, he, has, he clearly hasn't with a crowd like it. Red can see black and yellow will have an easy hoop if black is unable to clear yellow. isn't phased, he's put in, that's a reasonable ball, certainly perfectly runnable, slight angle, about two yards. Oh no, yellow's got, got the block, so what's happened, he's just playing into position. Two options here. The less risky one is to try and cut yellow slightly on the right so it goes into wired position from blue. The other option, far riskier, is to jump. And hasn't managed that because blue is wide open to yellow. So let's have a look at the tempo of Hammond's swing. If it's nice and smooth again, we'll know that he's really taken heart from his 3-0 lead. to undo do all the good, although he's still got a handy lead, but um, 
he would have dearly loved to have hit that right in the middle. Ideally, slightly on the left-hand side, and he might have finished not too far away from five, which would have been a brilliant outcome. As it is, Ben is now able to take four and have black in rather useful position. But no, he is not taking on the hoop. Well, I find that a little bit surprising. Um, it didn't look a particularly difficult hoop. And he's not got blues so close that that's a gimme. So we can see this hoop going around in a few more cycles, a few more rotations yet. red back into position. Ah, oh, interesting. And missing it. Well, I'm afraid I don't understand Ben's tactics here, and um, I would have preferred to take that hoop on any day. And the fact it was ankle meant that my ball wouldn't have gone all that far through the hoop. So I'd probably have quite a short clearance at the ball in five. As it is, oh, that has rather helped him. But he's now taking on a shot which must be at least twice the length of the one that he decided not to earlier. Yep. But um, he's now right down at the bottom of the court. Not a huge problem, but he won't have an 8-yard clearance on red, he'll have a 10-yard, 10, 10 or 11-yard. That's a good place to put it, because now yellow can achieve two things in one stroke. When it next plays, it'll try and block blue at red, and it will take position itself. And it'll be very straight position as well. Probably thinking about clearing black rather than blocking. This touch has been really good in the last day or two, so I'm surprised she isn't going for the block. And nice to see a very smooth, relaxed swing. And that now puts Ben in the position of he's firing into thin air, so to speak. And yes, if he clears it, that's fine, but he's almost certainly to be further away from the hoop than yellow, for example, and red can just come straight back into position. So, unless he can do a really superb controlled clearance, just shunting red about 10, 12 yards away and stopping very close to the hoop, he is not in a great place in this hoop. Just missing. So Mohammed is looking like being a favourite for a 4-1 lead. Again, by no means a guarantee. In game four of the semi-final, Josh led Ben 4-1, but didn't score another hoop. And that was good to see a controlled hoop. He now needs 4-1. Um, 
he could be at a slight risk of then getting a wire with black using the peg, but that's a long way. He's on the south boundary. Got to move the ball about 20 yards. That's a pretty useful effort. I think he's actually probably just open to the east of the peg, but very good touch from that range. That's just too much. It's one of the first length errors that they've committed for quite some time. Harris to put blue in and block red and either black or the hoop or preferably both. That's exactly what he's going for. A bit strong, I think. Just gone past. Yes, he doesn't like it. Ben can go for an interesting one where he tries to do a slightly split stop stop shot which will send red to the middle of the west boundary or somewhere south. Yeah, I mean, he won't be terribly pleased with that. He's got black far further away than he wanted. And Mohammed's still in this hoop. Probably take position blocking blue. Just gone through through that. Which will presumably force Ben to do a control clearance on blue. With the chance of what's called a follow through in off, you'll probably only get the jaws, but if it hits a bit to the right of centre. Ah, this went for the in off, but just gave too much angle, so went past the eastern wire. foot short of ideal but not bad he's got a hoop <coughs> now this looks like um, a man who wants a hoop put his stamp back on this game so Seven, seven yards at the hoop, and no. Nice opportunity coming up for Mohammed here. Just gently bunt yellow into red, pushing it into wide position from blue. Exactly what he's trying to do, oh, and. But the great second prize is that you get position with yellow. Let's 
so it's quite hard to see how Bed can get back back into this hoop. The one way would be if he can do a very controlled clearance on red, hit it absolutely in the middle, and finish between the peg and the hoop, while sending red sufficiently far away that it can't clear him in return. And the hit's great, but unfortunately it was not straight, and so he's gone further away from the hoop than red. So Hammer just brings red back in behind yellow. Fully aware that yellow is love if we moved by black. And that red could have been better. It should have been another yard at least. That's given him a hoop which he could conceivably miss. Red fails the hoop, then Ben is right, right back in it. And so he's actually now playing <coughs> the other way. He wants yellow to be running the hoop. And so Ben now has to decide whether he's going to try and get rid of red. aiming as if he's going to try and take red out of the picture. That's for chop. On the nothing. That's a super shot. And from seemingly being completely out of it a moment ago, Doesn't manage to block yellow at yet block black at yellow, it could be back to an open hoop. No attempt at the block, he's just taking position. Um, that's sufficiently far away that no guarantee he'll run it, even if he gets left the chance. So black will very happily just shift yellow. A good shot, but yellow was so central that black was bound to travel sufficiently far in the same direction to not have a proper hoop. Uh, black at the hoop is very risky and difficult, but yellow will just come straight back into position, perhaps trying to block blue at red this time. taking position. <clears throat> Again, Ben just wants to try and get more and more control by hitting these right in the middle and hope, holding his own ball close to the action and not doing a bad job. shot. It's also very good for the person who's behind just to slow play down and to refuse to let the person who's got a big lead convert it quickly and clinically into an easy win. It's in Ben's interest just to make this drag out for as long as it can because he's very happy with long matches and he may hope that Mohammed is not quite so comfortable. <clears throat> well, 
that was an attempted block, but it was overhit by a lot, given the standards which these two have been positioning in the early part of this match. Red can't run, so Blue is happy to take protective position, threatening a five and a half yard hoop shot. And more importantly, if a jump opportunity occurred, then would be quite comfortable with this length of jump. Pulled off a superb bouncing bomb from seven yards this match in the semi final. Well, that's not in the jaws, and so it actually offers Black the opportunity of what can be called a replacement shot if he hits just, just right, just a fraction to the left of the centre of red. There's a real possibility that Black will ricochet into the jaws, which is a turnaround on this hoop would be quite something. But if he hits too solidly, all that will happen is that Black will just follow through and also be out of position. So, not too hard. That was too hard, and it's achieved the clearance of. Red and black is within range, but it's uh, not made life any clearer for the next couple of shots. So he'll just go back into position. And Ben now has the option, if he, I, maybe he can see the hoop, I think. Yellow's gone just too far. And Ben now has this five and a half yard hoop to make the score 4-2 to Mohammed. into a sensible position and black has to clear blue, yellow. That's probably unlikely to matter but he's brought black over to seven. So were yellow to get a perfect block on blue to red, and red would score the hoop, um, Ben's in good position for the following hoop. And that must be close. And the crowd on the line like it. I think he can see half of red, in fact. So you can expect blue to be on the south boundary and red on the east boundary after this. Oh no, doing it that way around. And again. Just trying to drive yellow onto onto red didn't work anyway, and now Mohammed has this shot for five one.
Yep. <clears throat> So Ben takes advantage of his positioning of black, but the point about hoop seven is it's always very close to everything, so you tend to get an awful lot of hitting. And obviously Mohammed will be expecting to clear black with red, which is on the north on the north boundary directly above hoop six. And that's very nice weight with yellow is coming. Oh, but has he blocked himself? Well, I would think he can just about see black, but um, he, that ball was under hit by about a yard. And Ben's having a look at it. Second ball into position. Looking for a block, perhaps. If so, it's it's short. <clears throat> so ideally, red hits black on its right cheek and sends it a long way down the court onto the west boundary. But no, he was definitely aiming right of centre, but unfortunately gave it too much. And Ben has a chance not merely to get another point and take it to 2-5, but also to get right down to 2-8. To so he doesn't want to smash this, this has to be a controlled hoop. And well done. That's going to be too much, but he was certainly intending the right things. <clears throat> well, that looks like a pretty good lag into wide position. he can't clear yellow with black so he's going for it with blue now 20 yards nice smooth strike almost has it that must have been a sort of double there not going to be able to miss this hoop by anything he needs to make contact. <clears throat> Again taking out the board is not to play next so here's Mohammed a three yarder, three and a half yarder, almost straight for a six two lead.
and slams it through with confidence. Six three is a lead which looks substantial but can be eroded very quickly. Six two seems even more substantial. And of course, there are famous examples of when a six two lead led to a loss, most obviously in the 2013 Gold Croquet Championship final in Cairo when Reg Bamford came back from 6-2 down to win the fifth game 7-6 in fairly spectacular fashion. But nonetheless, Mohammed must be feeling a great deal more relaxed now. He should be on the verge of a very comfortable win in this second game unless Ben is able to pull a few rabbits out of hats. Oh yes, this is looking impressive. Um, I say it's Mohammed is very much a feel and emotions player, and um, I think he's now feeling a great deal better about life and his croquet than he was in the first first game. Ben is much more a rationalist and needs to recognise that he's got an opponent who is now going to fire on most of his cylinders. some relief and is looking for a referee to help him judge how much he can bring things in. Another case for the referee's tape, the tape measure. He wants to clear yellow, so he needs to have blue marked in. First thing, I just use a mallet head on each occasion. It's much quicker. Almost always gives enough relief. Frankly, I think you'd probably need to move the black as well, as that's conceivably in the firing line. It is more than six yards away, which is the magic number. I don't think the rules permit that, so it just has to take its chance. We've got about 270 people watching around and a few hundred watching the streaming. The weather has, thank goodness, remained dry and actually very pleasant. The sun is hidden by the, by the clouds, so no one's worrying about sunburn. After all that, I 
Well, that, <clears throat> whether he was aiming for the in off, I'm not sure, but he didn't miss it by all that much. And Mohammed now has a seven yard hoop shot to take game two, seven two, and equalise the match at one all. And he's got it. What a great way to finish. Well, I imagine the players will want lunch at this point. So we'll be shutting down for the next half hour to 45 minutes. Yep, that looks like it. So we'll see you back shortly.
it's just a rugby sport that the 350 fields.
Okay, back to game three after the lunch break. I just had the first four shots with Ben again choosing to go with blue and being about four yards south. 
But Mohammed again, playing the inside game, has managed to put red right into his path, as far as I can tell. So Ben's come up with black, and then yellow shot at blue and missed. So Ben, I think, is clearing red here. Good firm shot, but again, the problem with that reply is that blue itself goes north of the hoop. So it'll be, if red should manage to clear black, and obviously it's a long shot, then the balance of the hoop will go back to being neutral rather than favorable for Ben. yards almost straight and that's a worrying miss that's the sort of shot which you simply should not fail on it's been my sense that Ben started the stronger psychologically Mohammed's now come right back. That was a chance for Ben to get away to a solid start, and he's unfortunately failed to do so. <coughs> so Mohammed's getting some help from the spectators to keep the check fence away from him as he prepares to try and clear black away from the hoop. Very straight hit. And now Ben has no choice but to try and take blocking position. Ideally within about a foot of the hoop. Not too easy to do, but that way you give red the fear that it might peel you. And that's a little bit more but looks pretty good for line, so... Now the Egyptians are very fond of what you might call patient croquet, and you might well see Mohammed just gently push this one past the hoop. And that's a very good shot. I don't think he's got the crosswire, but he's not very far away from it. But that was a very nice controlled shot. No panic. And even if blue can hit red, it's just hitting it back to the first corner area. He can't hit red into open court. And Ben is doing what a lot of the top players do, not messing around with taking position inside the court. He's just going straight to the boundary signalling his intention if he gets the chance to run the hoop from seven yards. Yeah. 
Nu gaan we zien. Nou, het is. Ja, het is Ben put black on the boundary for a reason. He can clear red, and of course he didn't want black to be in court at all, because otherwise red would just clear black to the east boundary. Well, this offers Mohammed a couple of, well, three. Yes, he's feeling the hoop. <clears throat> that could well mean that he's going to have a crack at it. Equally, he could think about blocking black very close to where it lies, and then leaving the hoop to yellow. Or he could just take blocking position generally nearer the hoop. But I think he feels he wants to try and put his stamp on this match and running this hoop from 70 yards at a slight angle will do exactly that. He's also got the reason that even if he misses, black will then have to choose either to go for the hoop itself, and if black misses, yellow's going to have the hoop, so he'll be the winner anyway. Or if black clears yellow, the hoop will become neutral again because there'll be no balls anywhere near it. So this is in effect a fairly free shot. Good effort. Ben's testing out the proximity of the check netting. This would indicate that he is having a go at yellow rather than the hoop, and he wants both balls moved. <coughs> the referee is having a chat with Mohammed and asking him if he's happy for yellow to be moved as well. Good firm hit. But given where red is, the advantage still lies firmly with 
Muhammad, if he can get this ball into good position, really forces Blue to take it out immediately. That might conceivably be half wide at least. What Ben needs here is control clearance because red can easily take wide position from black. So ideally he'd like to hit yellow on its right hand cheek, which will send blue off the court on the south boundary close to, to, to hoop one and yellow should go across to the east boundary. Well, not bad, except that uh, it certainly allows yellow the chance of clearing blue, not only to the west boundary, but northwards too. So this shot getting red into position, but wide from black should be straightforward. He's missed wide position, he'll be cross with himself because it wasn't a difficult shot. And it looks though Ben thinks he can see at least the left hand edge of red. If he hits that, it'll be red in the corner and black on the south boundary below the hoop. Which is more or less what has happened. question of clearing blue it's just going back into position and a pretty sedate start to this third game but for both players it's so crucial to get off to a to a solid start the match is completely open at this stage just under three hours play Ben's doing is familiar tactic. He's actually used the presence of yellow to hide blue from red. And if he's, and he looks as though he must be reasonably close. In which case, this may force red into trying the hoop. did and he tried it but he missed the left and came off the outside of the wire. This now gives Ben the opportunity to clear yellow firmly to the north. He wants to hit it just a bit left of centre ideally. Although even a straight hit is going to give a very good chance of yellow being wired from blue by the hoop. So the one thing he doesn't want to do is to hit it on the right hand cheek as that will leave it with a relatively short clearance on blue.
not what he wanted at all. It's a complete, a complete 180 degree turnaround. Now, will Mohammed take the hoop or will he do a sort of slightly split tap to get rid of blue and still hold the hoop? Interesting test of a player's state of mind. This is um, this is what he should be doing. He is taking a positive view. He knows he can run these hoops. Now's the time to do it. And now he's ahead in the match, and he's just missing the hoop. So game all and one nil to Mohammed Karim. Once more, with red racing up to the north boundary. Or the yellow, sorry, is now blue to try and get wide position. With red being taken off to the east penalty spot for being offside. That looks pretty good, it may just be open on the east east of the hoop. Mohammed comes across to have a look. It's definitely warming up a bit as the sun threatens to come out. Good lag for Mohammed. A little short, but still perfectly adequate hoop, three yards, 15 degree angle. And a good one from Ben as well, actually. Mohammed's more like two and a half, half yards, and Ben's probably five feet. Great clearance from, from, from Howard. Carbon copy of what he did in the opening game, in the second game. He sent Blue right down towards first corner. He has a ball in reasonable position. And now Ben needs to find a clearance from just over 20 yards. Or else this game could begin to assume the character of the second. Which of course Mohammed went on to win by a comfortable margin. And interestingly, he's chosen not to try and clear red. But to put a second ball in. This, of course, simply removes all the optionality from the situation. Karim has no choice at all but to go for it. Missed opportunity. If he'd got that, I think it could have been the start of a run which could have 
given him quite an edge in the match, but he's missed it, and now Ben has a very straightforward three-foot hoop. And makes no mistake with that, so one all. Four and a half yard position, pretty well straight. And Ben is looking as if he thinks it needs to be cleared immediately. Maybe he just felt the need to make a statement after the start of the game, but he's missed that, and so Mohammed can now put a ball much closer in, and has two in front. A second go at yellow, about 14 yards. Just tickles it. Interestingly, no attempt to go for the block, just two balls in front is good enough for Mohammed, which now forces blue to go for red. And what he's playing for is that even if blue hits, it's unlikely to stay close to the hoop. So he can build his advantage. So he always has two balls in front and Ben's having to shoot to clear from further and further away. Ben tried to turn it round by control clearance and didn't get that far away from getting an in-off or a jaws, which would have been a real coup. But now, with yellow just the western side of a straight line through three and four, red can now try and get the blocking position, taking position about two foot to the east of yellow. Just fallen short, it was on a perfect line, but it needed another two foot, or another 15 inches even. Missed by a coat of paint on the right hand side. And that could be expensive. That's a shame. <laughs> 
Mind you, yellow probably jaws is not a tactic we've seen yet in this game. I think they both have good jump shots. But nonetheless, given the evident effects of pressure, I think a, a close jaws might well be quite an attractive option at some, at, at some stage. <coughs> and certainly, although Ben did a superb bouncing bomb yesterday, if yellow were to take position, very tight to the jaws, I think it would be a big challenge for him. Anyway, first things first, red goes into position. And then black has to shoot from almost the second corner. And the other option, of course, is for yellow simply to block blue at red and then force blue to try the hoop from the boundary. So still very much advantage red and yellow. They even add to the blocking possibilities, I'm not sure. It may well have blocked. So I think what Mohammed's thinking of doing is taking black out and holding position with yellow. And I sort of run, th run through there, has he managed to get ye yellow into a blocking position? Either for the hoop or perhaps more likely, yes, I think he may have got the hoop blocked, but I think blue can see red. Yeah. Now dispensing with moving red. Looks like blue for the hoop, I think. Nope, he's taken out. Nice central hit on red. Sense, pretty sensible position, definitely threatening the hoop and probably forcing Blue to take it out in due course, but now it's black to try and clear yellow while still holding some sort of position to the north of the hoop. Yeah, not a bad effort. He's not really got a hoop with black, but he's certainly in the vicinity, although obviously on the open side, so he can't clear anything except to the, to the near boundary. This is what makes for quite long duels at these corner hoops. So in comes yellow again. And now the risk for, for Ben is that red will seek to clear black and leave yellow with a chance of the hoop if red can get black as far away as the west boundary. A right, change of tactic. He is obviously concerned Clearly yellow is blocking red at the hoop, so he's now going to move black to where red cannot clear it. Well, good to see some intelligent thinking going on. Now of course this then allows
red to think about blocking black at either blue or the either yellow or the hoop. Now it must have left the hoop open from the way he's <coughs> He's jumping his own wall. This is certainly aggressive. Oh, good shot. <clears throat> Great response by Mohamed. He's jumped his own ball, a fairly rare tactic to employ, and didn't smash it, and has trickled through, so he's 2-1 up. And probably fairly relaxed about being taken to two all, because he will have the a chance to go to five first, although, as I was saying in the previous game, these days the better players don't really mind having the eight-yard clearance across. Nonetheless, he's taken the lead in the match again. He's 2-1 up in game three. The games are one all. has rushed red down to give himself either a chance of the hoop which is probably his main objective because all that ben will do is to bring blue down to join black and have two balls in the close vicinity of the hoop while mohammed only has red to do something with and yellow is a bit out of play So having earned himself the chance to have a go for the hoop, Mohammed's now get a chance his arm from round about 10 yards. And he's got it. Straight through. This definitely spells a hint of trouble for Ben. Three one up with his tail up and running long hoops without touching a wire is a good sign for the Egyptian and not so good for Ben. So he needs to get back on terms without delay. It's a reasonable start. Black's two and a half yards back from five. Yellow's about three and a half yards back and is not blocking red clearing black. So now Ben needs to almost certainly play to block red at black. Again, his choices are to either block or to try and take out yellow. It looks to me as if he's going for not only a block, but a close block. He's actually going nearer the hoop than his own black. Hmm. Well, I don't think that's blocking anything. I don't think it's blocking yellow at the hoop or red at the hoop and certainly not blocking red at black, so potential turning point in the game coming up. Yep. Oh. oh. <clears throat> well, you make your own luck in this game, and he got a flick off blue and then went into the jaws.
So Ben may be forgiven for wondering if the rub of the green has gone against him, because this is now looking like potentially a big lead for Mohammed. Thanks. Water, Basso. And not surprisingly, Ben's taken the view that he needs to stop the rot. He's just playing for position just south of the peg. This is the nearest to hoop six he can get to without being declared offside. Now, Mohammed needs to make up his mind. Is it worth going for the rush? which when the opponent's taking position within eight yards of the next hoop there is something to be said for it if you can rush red up to within a couple of yards of the hoop then you put a lot of pressure on blue to do an immediate clearance or perhaps to try and promote black but you now he's going for the very egyptian approach i'm actually hoping to bring black back although black can of course ref refuse to move if it wants to I think the view, his view is that if he plays a good shot from the jaws, if he's left in there, then he'll be able to give Black the risk of peeling him. However, Ben's now going for the clearance, which is not difficult to do. It's two and a half yards. He'll aim well left of the center of the ball to avoid the wire and get it out very nicely. But with yellow wide by the hoop from black, the fate of the hoop should not really be in, be in doubt. Taking the course of the approach, just putting red back into position. They've gone a bit far, in fact. I'm not sure red runs. So now it's down to what? Ben can do with black, and from where I'm sitting, I don't think he can do an awful lot. Quite a vigorous swing as he trying to run through the hoop and hit yellow that way. Well, didn't work. Now, what's been achieved, of course, by refusing to take the rush on red is that black is now back south of five, so it doesn't have an easy shot either to lag into position at six or to clear a ball that has lagged into position before it. Well, not the greatest of outcomes, but he's now 4-1 up, and interesting, he was trying to run it under control, uh, rather than just to slog it to the north boundary. Just a fraction underweight from Ben, that's not the most straightforward of hoops. Mohammed will go and have a look at that, and is thinking once more about rushing yellow. See if he can cut it quite hard. He'll hit it very much on the right-hand side and try and bring it really north of the peg and just south of blue. Ah, oh, that's not achieved much. That's useful. Um, now Ben can just bring black in and take good position. And this, in effect, forces Mohammed into thinking about taking on the hoop. And he's run them from this length and longer, so it's perfectly possible that he'll get this one. But 
not that time. <clears throat> Missing it by a couple of inches on the left of the hoop, which from that range is not what he would be expecting. Not to get the hoop perhaps, but to certainly bounce, hit it and perhaps bounce back. Well, Ben has two, two chances at this and there's not going to waste either of them. He could have just moved blue about a foot and blocked red at black, which would be an easier shot. But he gets that and makes it for two to Mohammed. Slightly generous position at the hoop. No, it's not too bad. That's actually, yep. Slow down a bit as it finished, and that's three and a half yards back, three yards back from the hoop. And Ben will do what a lot of the top players do now just take it straight out and hope very much to hit it on the right hand side. So red goes off the west boundary where it can't think of running the hoop, but he will go off the north boundary and be in hoop running position. Um, not just a, a little more thickness he'd have achieved that as it is red is still actually left a plausible hoop and yellow can come in now take position and try and block blue at red that's a fraction strong good position but it's not blocking blue at red taken out um, and the fact that blue's in court doesn't matter so much because it's well to the north of yellow so yellow would be hard push to clear it a long way if that came to be necessary I might think of jawsing here otherwise no reason not to go for the hoop Good shot. And that is putting a pretty hefty stamp on this game. He's 5 2 up. Not that far down the court, but it means if he loses the eighth, he'll be 5 3 up and will have control at nine. in a reasonable ball, so perhaps four yards back, but pretty well straight. Well, if yellow had actually remained in contact with black, that could have been quite interesting. As it is, the ball spring apart, and now it's a second ball from Ben, again about four yards back. And I'd be surprised if Red can see the hoop, so I would expect him to be going for, for black here at reasonable pace. is on the left and that gives 
been a chance to do one of two things. He could take the hoop immediately, or, as I think he might be tempted, play a split clearance on yellow, which will take black over towards hoop nine, because he will know only too well that winning eight when you're to be five three down is not a great position, but he now has this chance. Lays, and that's a good shot. That is a really good shot. Um, now I suspect that Mohammed can see enough of blue to spoil this, but it was really well worth playing for and it was very well executed as well. That's why it's yellow at blue. It's a very long shot indeed. 30 yards or a bit less, 28 yards. is a big shot if he gets this it'll be a real kick in the guts to Ben who must have thought he's played a blinder in getting black so close to nine and yet not be offside so big shot this very close but not quite well this is another big shot for Ben he knows exactly what's at stake. And if he fails this hoop, he will be kicking himself big time. Yes, good shot. And it's not beyond the bounds of possibility that if red misses black, we could be 5-4 and then 5-all in a very short space of time. how big a shot this is as well. To be forgiven for thinking he was beginning to exert an iron grip on this match and on the title, but suddenly it could all change. Yes, great shot. Great shot. Take deep, deep position, possibly off the boundary. Well, pretty close to that. And said that, I think red really caught black on the left cheek. He could send it a long way west, so he might regret that. And with. Yep, that's um, a runnable hoop for yellow. Now, 
that may well be blue taking advantage of yellow's position to hide from red, but I suspect red will be only interested in trying to get rid of black as far as it can. So is he going to go for the big cut to the right? Well, as we have in mind, it hasn't really worked all that well because yeah, black is in perfectly good position to try the hoop. And you with blue in position, it wouldn't be mad either to think about clearing yellow as far up the court as he can. And looking at the way he's standing, that may well be what he has in mind. Oh, went for the hoop. Maybe blue wasn't in good enough position to make clearing yellow worth worthwhile. Yep, the hammer's going to have a go for it. He'd be perfectly happy just to get through, not too worried about how far it goes through. In 6-3 he knows he'll be in a very strong position. Oh, great shot. And a long way up the court as well. He's now distinctly beyond peg high. 6-3 up. But again, it all depends who wins 10, because after that it's remarkably even. A good shot from Ben. That's um, right up there. With very few exceptions, these two players have not put a foot wrong when it comes to taking position. They've got the speed of the lawn absolutely embedded in their minds. Now that I think was an attempt to block yellow and blue, and I think it's gone just a foot or so too far. So Mohammed can now seek to drive blue into the third corner area. what he had in mind because that has left blue with no more than a six and a half seven yard clearance which is Ben is surely odds on to succeed in achieving This needs to be another controlled clearance, just moving red far enough away for it to be no threat to the hoop. And 
unfortunately not. That's just wicked red a little straighter and nearer the hoop. And I'm sure Mohammed will be feeling that things are very much going his way at the moment. Not just the fact he's going to take the second get the third game and lead 2-1, but his opponent is clearly not playing at his best yet, but Ben is nothing if not a fighter, as he showed yesterday. Yeah. So 7-3 in the third, Mohamed Karim leads 2-1 in the Golf Croquet World Championship final. Okay, well, without too much delay, we're into game four. Ben Rothman starting off, having lost the third game with the blue ball. He will be absolutely intent on making a fast start. He's in effect in a similar position, but not so bad as in game three against Josh Freeth yesterday in the semi finals. He made a fast start, he reasserted himself on the game and went on to win. At the moment, Mohamed Karim definitely has an advantage. But that's a superb answer. That is three yards due south, perhaps a little closer than that. And that's asking Mohamed, are you going to shoot at me immediately or put one ball behind and trust to one shot? And that ball is good enough from Ben, he can try and put black just short of it to prevent the shot working. So there's no attempt, and this time he's gone outside. Now it's been interesting watching Mohammed play inside the first ball in the earlier games. This time he's gone to the conventional position, where he's basically saying, I'm going to hit you to the boundary, I don't think you can clear me, and I'll run the hoop with red. Now Ben will be thinking, well... I've got blue in good position. I'm going to send this ball just two feet short. 
maybe well it's perfect perfect for length and if it's okay for line then that is a great start because not only is he doing what he needs to do but he's proving to himself that he can pull it off when needed because I think that's where anyone who's been missing hoops or missing clearances begins to get doubt. Anyway, Mohammed has obviously something to aim at. It may even just be trying to drive black onto blue. This will be a full strength shot. It's this interesting and very personal style whereby he has the mallet stationary on the ground and obviously pointing the right way from his perspective. He has his bottom hand's forefinger stretched down the mallet shaft, not something you see too often. Then he drops the hands down. One look up and then fires. Just misses. Well, this is definitely a must get hoop for Ben. If he makes a muck of this, he will feel very, very vulnerable. Well, he's done the main thing. He's one up in the fourth. I would prefer to be a, lot way, a long way up the court, but he'll settle for that. Just a fraction too hard from Mohammed. That ball will not run. Ben is thinking though about, no, he's just coming up, he, and this is good play. When you've got an opponent who cannot run and is on the short side, then the one thing you don't want to do is to put a ball into normal position so it can just hit you away. So Ben's gone between red and the boundary to prevent that possibility. In comes Mohammed, and that is not a great shot. Um, Red can obviously block black at yellow, but black doesn't have to worry because it's unlikely that yellow can do more. He might jaws, he might jaws, but blue's now come up into a good general position. And even if red were to jaws, were to block black at yellow, and yellow were to jaws, well, blue certainly could jump. So I think we're going to see blue taken out with a stop shot if Mohammed can manage it. Not bad. The ratio of movement is about four or five to one there, so red is still in the area. position is sort of four or five yards south and south and west making sure that yellow can't do a useful stop shot on you Ooh, that's a fraction closer than I would like I think uh, And have a go, I imagine, for the for the jaws. It's going to have a go, I imagine, for the for the jaws. No, he's got it. 
What a great shot. Smooth swing and let the spin take the ball through through the hoop. You slam it the ball, it will skid most of the way, and if it's skidding when it hits the hoop, it will not behave like that. But he gave it a chance to pick up rolling motion, and that is what took it took it through. Sensible reply by Ben. Three and a half half yards, slightly angled. And the content just to go behind. <coughs> ben can try and put black into position, just short of blue, blocking yellow and blue. But he's chosen instead just to take rather tighter position. See him going going to check, and he must be very certain that black blocks blue. But and maybe it does because Ben is not striding up and immediately shaping up to, to run the hoop. So are we going to have a cuddle here, just drifting, or just an attempt to bash? red into the corner. There's a cuddle. Left so far short, I suspect that's not covering anything at all, so this could that could be a pretty pivotal error, unfortunately for Ben. If black is cleared a long way and yellow can run, that's going to be 2-1 to Mohammed and it might be quite difficult to peg back. Ah. Oh. Oh. Well. What a potential turning point. 2-1 to Ben now, and first ball down to four. Can he take advantage? If he was worrying about the rub of the green in the previous game, he's just had a massive, massive gift here. A lovely weighted shot down to, down to the hoop. The important thing with these shots is just not to do anything daft, so leaving it short of everything is quite a good option. The worst thing you can do is to overhit it and find yourself landing into contact with your partner ball. So this is now Mohammed, red to clear black, from round about 15 yards. Just what he required. Oh, 
Let's bend under the microscope again. It needs to get a good. So the ideal here is to hit yellow just a bit on the left of centre, so the black will actually go over towards five, and you clear yellow to the west boundary. But yellow not to be able to disturb blue, and then for blue to run what is going to be a four-yard hoop, I think. Do those things, and suddenly he is back in charge again. But if any of that doesn't work out, Mohammed is looking to be well positioned. Not bad at all, not quite as much meat on yellow as he might have liked, as it's not. It's only about a nine yarder for, for Mohammed at blue. Given this recent shooting, it would be a bit of a surprise if he missed. Yep. That's enough. That gets blue away from the danger point. All Ben can do is to come back into position. It'll all come down to whether yellow is able to see blue after black has played, and if it can, whether it can hit it away. Because red will just take position between the hoop and blue. Ideally blocking blue at, blue at the hoop. So Ben's not going to muck around, he's just going to clear red out of the way. And that's nicely done. This now gives Mohammed what I call the sort of the empty shot, the vacuum shot. Um, even if he connects, unless he's absolutely centre ball and not going too too hard, yellow's going to be a long way from the action from the hoop. But fortunately for him, his red is only seven yards away from the hoop, so it's not as bad as if this was at one of the central hoops. Got his eye in much, much better now. He's hit the last four. And all Ben can do now is just to return blue to two yards north and await developments. Possibly a fraction to the west so you can put so to the east so you can put black between blue and yellow. Mohammed may just simply decide to. No, he's playing in, inside. Hasn't locked, so blue does have a hoop if it's left there. Now, I would have thought he looks as though he's trying to clear red, but I'd have thought he'd be better off blocking yellow at blue. It's not a long distance to make black travel and he sh must have good chances of getting it but he's preferring to see if he can get black closer to five. Not really work. Um, you can bet your life that if yellow misses blue and blue runs the hoop red will be extremely tight to five. And black on the boundary will be unable to do very much about it. Yep. 
No, his eye is well and truly in now. to take position again. You know if you're fairly confident there's no chance it'll be left there to run the hoop. Red returns the compliment. Three yard position almost straight. Now this he must be going for the block this time. Looks like it. Wouldn't no, he's just gone for position. Hmm. Well if Mohammed collects blue in the middle, Ben's gonna have a twenty yarder to rescue Hoopfall. Well, not as central as some of his earlier shots, but nonetheless enough to give Ben a headache. Although, to be fair, it's, if Ben can hit red a fraction right of centre and drive it up to the north, then suddenly he has the chance, assuming red misses black from there, to make it 3-1. Ah, that is, I'm afraid, a bit symptomatic of what's been happening. Just succeeded in straightening up red a little. The dynamic we might see is red will be hit firmly to the boundary. Black will take position at five and we'll then see red smashing black away to allow Mohammed to win five as well. That's what could happen. Ben will be hoping fervently that that doesn't happen. And I think he's got to bring blocking into his armory now. It's a trademark of Mohammed Karim that when he's playing well, he runs hoops very firmly and very cleanly, and he's done that half a dozen times now. Nice shot, that's absolutely on the button. So we'll see yellow go about a yard or so behind black. Now that threatened almost to get in the way of red at black, but not quite. Should have really been pointed, let's say, another yard to the right of black, and that weight would have been absolutely perfect. Oh. 
Well, it's a long way for a block, but I don't think he's got anything better. He should just get this ball a yard to the left of black as he sees it and hope it's the right length. strong to me. That really doesn't help him one little bit, unless it was an attempted control clearance of yellow, which I think was the wrong shot anyway. So, eleven yards, he gets this, he's in the pound seats for this match. He's got it. And if he were to go on to win this game in the match, I would say that was the defining moment. Shot. The importance of that roke cannot be overestimated. If he'd missed that and Mohammed had run five up to six, then I would have said the odds of Mohammed going on to win this game and the title would have been around about 70 to 80 percent. As it is, with Blue in, despite that overhit or that attempt to control clearance that went wrong, Blue can be policeman here. It's close enough to be able to deal with Yellow. And now if, I'm sorry, black can deal with yellow and blue just comes in and threatens the hoop. If he's not feeling that confident, he'll take yellow out now. Oh, he is. And the only drawback to that is if when he clears yellow, he ends up clattering into blue as well. just plays red down to ah oh, that is not a good outcome at all um, for two reasons two obvious reasons um, one is that if Ben is able to clear yellow and red and blue is prepared to jump through five which from that range is not silly red would have no shot up to six but here's the key shot can black make contact with yellow and not blue and hence get control of hoop five and unfortunately it just went to the left and it's cleared blue and not yellow it was not a bad shot but it just was probably a centimetre off being what he wanted. He would have hit yellow first, his ball would have split away from the partner and um, all would have been well. Blue would have been left there to run the hoop. Well, I think he should just run this hoop and that'll, he won't get frightfully close to six, but he'll, at least he'll free up red which will shoot off to the east oh, 
yep, that's a good shot and collected an awful lot of red and sent it up to near corner three but he's through and he's 3 2 up. And blue, which of course was hit by its partner to be on the halfway line, is being sent over to the east boundary. what's required. He can get this hoop, he's three all, back on terms, and anything could happen. But otherwise the momentum has definitely shifted from Ben to Mohammed. After that unfortunate rush peel at three which put Ben two, two on ahead, Mohammed's won the last two hoops, and if he wins the third one in the, on the on the trot, it will make life very difficult indeed. Not just from the school line, but from the psychology of it. And nice quiet reply from Mohammed into a very good position. Not blocking blue, but and obviously yellow can see blue, and so Ben is now looking to take an eight yarder at yellow to punch it away to the eastern side of the court. And so double the length of clearance it will have on blue. And again he's just lost his line a bit. That was the last one also just snipped something and I think that's probably opened out um, the shot so it's an easier one for yellow on blue than it was before. Now put the pressure on on Ben once more to really find a control clearance to remove red from the danger area and yet keep himself at least within seven yards of the hoop to maintain some degree of control over its outcome. Great shot. Great shot under pressure. Trouble is that it wasn't in the, in the middle. And of course, Red will just come straight back to one or two yard position. Possibly he should keep slightly out to the west so that yellow can slide in, taking position and blocking from the two enemy balls, which are, that he's just gone straight back to almost dead straight. looks as though he's going for the, for the clearance immediately. So I can't quite see the point of that if he puts black behind into position and clears red then at least he has a chance of red missing black and black running. This way Yellow will just take position probably behind red and the hoop is in the firm control of Mohammed Karam for the moment.
And what is worse, if he misses this, then both his balls are offside. <clears throat> so suddenly, 5-2 becomes a reality. Shot. Well, it's well done. But uh, red into position, blocking black at yellow seems to be the indicated line. Obviously, blue where it is is fantastic for hoop seven. Mm, that's just gone out. Ooh, that might even be blocking, and Ben's going to go and have a look to see whether that is indeed the case. If it is, then he has the option of trying to put black between red and the hoop. What will then happen is that yellow will try and clear blue, of course, but nonetheless it gives him an extra option. It looks as though he's going to go for the clearance on yellow. Sadly not. Well, if there is a blockage, then I think yellow will just play to block blue at, blue at red. Ideally, you come slightly off the straight line to minimize the chance of a run through. Mm, that looks pretty straight to me. So if Ben were to hit yellow, absolutely bang in the middle it might well take out red as well. Nope. Cut it away, and now uh, that is a hamburger. Four footer through a four two lead. Plenty of wire but gets through to the boundary. So 4 2. And 2 1 ahead in games. certainly prevents red from clearing black with which provides Ben with a little bit of relief um, I should say that I've seen another Egyptian also called Mohammed Mohammed Nasser run seven from a position that was not as favorable as red is today whether this Mohammed will choose to do the same is debatable but um, if he can't do anything about black, it will certainly occur to him. And in comes blue, which... Nicely weighted, very nicely weighted. And the trouble for red-yellow, of course, is that black has the simplest of clearances into the third corner. 
So, going up the hoop is not quite as daft as it might seem. And if he gets it, I think he's going for it. I think he's right. I don't think there's any other option. Very, very close into and out again. And I think if he'd got that, that probably would have been the titles, if not signed, sealed and delivered, it would have been a very big ask. But Ben now has a chance. He's only 4-2 down. If he can either dispatch yellow to the third corner and hope that Mohammed misses, or of course from this range, what he always can think of is doing something really unpleasant to yellow like going right in front of it, or perhaps even more deadly, right behind it. Now what this might lead to is two ball golf croquet for a bit. Going for the hoop, I am not convinced that's what I would do if he misses this. Poor judgment. He could have given himself a much easier shot with blue. He wanted to run the hoop and to get down to eight to give himself a chance of getting back to four all. Now, by doing this, it may well be that. No, that's a. Uh, he had such easy options to really paralyze yellow. I'm very surprised he didn't take them. These courts are so good you can be pretty confident the ball will do exactly what you want it to do, from short range anyway. Yep. Five two, big hill to, to climb now, but that was an unforced error by Ben. He should not have tried that hoop. His chances of getting down to eight under control were not high, and he had much better options available. However, that's a reasonable shot. A bit of a slope there, and that has gone way too far and well out to the left. I'm not quite sure what that's done. I don't think it blocks blue at the hoop. Probably gives Mohammed a somewhat bigger target. No, nope, he's happy just to come down. Yep. Yep, that's 5-3, five, five, keeps him in the match. But if Mohammed puts in a good ball here at 9, the clearance is going to be absolutely mandatory for Ben to have a decent chance. Yep, 
that looks good enough. It's definitely a two shot job and he's going to have a go at red immediately with black. or two. Yep. Sensible play. Just puts two balls in front, builds the pressure on the opponent immediately. So now blue has to clear red. Yep, got it. And the play now to put red to block black and yellow. But no, he wasn't interested, he's just put it back into, into position. Can't see why the block wasn't worth playing because you get position anyway, slightly longer, admittedly, but nonetheless, given the way Mohammed's been running his hoops recently, three yards shouldn't be an issue. And this way slightly opens the door for Ben. If he gets a good centre ball clearance, black won't go too far and he'll begin to rebuild the position. That is exactly what he wanted and needed. We'll have to do it again with blue, of course, but clearing red, but that's a good start. The problem, of course, is that if yellow comes back and he has to clear that, he'll be clearing it to the short side, to the east in this case. Now there's probably no, no attempt to go for the block at all. I don't think so. Although it's, maybe it's nearer the blocking line than I thought. I think blue can definitely get through to clear red. Unfortunately, not very central, so although he uh, removes the immediate threat, he's going to have another one to deal with when red goes back into position. And black, of course, has to clear yellow. So blue will have to clear red from all over again, but from almost twice as far. Again, that was no attempt made to try and block black and yellow, it's just put a ball behind yellow. Surely Mohammed must put yellow just beyond red to prevent blue from taking out red. If he succeeds in that and blue can't block 
and he runs the hoop, then he must be an odds-on favourite to take the title. Not a bit of it. That's no attempt to get blocking position at all. It's hard to understand because the difference in distance that yellow would have from the hoop is about two feet, which is absolutely nothing. And the risk is that the more you give the opponent the feeling that he's always going to have a shot, the better he's likely to, to play it. And Ben has now hit his last four. Okay, he's now got this option, of course. He can slam black, and black away. Maybe that's what he was hoping for. But if the cut had been on the other side and red was where blue was, this would have been a much more uncertain shot. may even have the jam on it of having the peg in the way. And to be fair to Mohammed, that may well explain why he was happy to take the, take the risk that if he was hit by blue, then red would go somewhere where he would have a fairly easy clearance, which is why he wanted to minimise the shot with yellow at the hoop. Good. Oh, what an incredible roque. He hit it really nicely, nice and smooth, and trusted his swing and got a very good reward. Not an impossible hoop given the one he ran at six a little earlier, but um, I wonder what he's tempted to do. This is actually. It's a difficult jawsing opportunity, but given that blue and black are both on the boundary, that would not be a bad outcome. The risk here is you catch the near wire, then spin across the face of the hoop and leave everything open. Or maybe he's going with weight. Yeah, oh! What a great hoop. That angle must have been about 40 degrees. This is absolutely right. And that really is handy. He's putting one hand on the doorknob to the title. That was a great hoop. If Ben recovers from this, this will make Harry Houdini look like an amateur. Good start.
Another very nice wetly weighted ball. So Mohammed now has got yellow and blue to and in fact yellow at blue could well leave blue wired from red by black. So a solid hit here could be absolutely decisive. This time. And this time, given the orientation of blue and red, Ben will be very tempted to try something whereby yeah, he splits red as far south as he can while stunning blue across to be four or five yards north of 11. And that's exactly what he's done. Ben, if his ploy is destroyed by. Oh, very close indeed. Yes, he thought he had it, I think, and it obviously moved off in the last couple of yards. So. Ben from two yards. Let's take this to six four. Problem. It's nice and smooth. And Ben has blue acting as guard ball at 11. So advantage still strongly Mohammed, but Ben is definitely alive and kicking. Imagine Ben will take on the hoop. He's just going to be looking for a nice solid stop shot clearance on, on yellow. He's got, oh, well, I was completely wrong, completely wrong. Uh, not sure that's percentage, but he's pulled it off fantastically. He's down into running position at 12. So we're 6 5 in the fourth. Um, maybe he felt it was time to roll the dice again and it came off brilliantly. Lovely touch from Mohammed again. In the practical terms, this means that probably, having seen what Ben's been up to, I'm not sure, he will just get this into position and then clear blue, red, assuming that yellow doesn't do anything to blue in the interim. That's a pretty adequate approach.
clearly had a sight of blue, but just missed the left. Well, decisions, decisions. You go for the hoop, miss it, and you give away the championship, or do you clear red? is to find out the line which means you won't rush peel red that's a good thing to do oh no he was checking out whether red had an adequate back swing to get up to 13 if it didn't there would be a great argument for going for the hoop come what may because then you might have advantage at 13 but i think he felt that he does have enough of the backswing, so I think he's going for red, but it's hard to say, and given what Ben did last time, I can't be sure. No, he's gone for the clearance, which makes sense. Sea of, sea of black. You can see it. No, just missing. And that ball will be firmly offside for hoop 13, assuming that Ben makes this hoop. <coughs> ben does what a lot of players do. When they've got a crucial hoop, you make sure the ball's put back on. It gives them calming down time. If you need it, some thinking time. And also it gives you the feeling that you're controlling things. In a golf croquet, every time it's your turn to play, you own the court for a short period of time and you can really do what you like on it. Yes, well done. So back from 6-3 down to after that remarkable angled hoop shot at 9, Ben is back to 6-all. Now these courts are pretty flat and Mohammed has shown fantastic touch. So I would be surprised if this ball is more than 3 yards due north of the hoop. I can't see it being less, much less. That's quite strong. That is cool. No, that's interesting when it was halfway to the, to the hoop, it looked as if it was running at quite a decent rate, but in fact it's slowed down and it's a wonderful, it gives him literally a three yarder, two and a half yarder, if Ben doesn't succeed in moving him. Far off, but missing by about, I would think, six inches to the right. You'll have one more go. Red comes back to the east penalty spot. The one thing that might go wrong, which I'm sure he'll work to avoid, is if you block yellow with red. No, he's not making any pretense at that at all. He's just firing off to the north boundary behind the hoop. He's Basically, the Egyptians like to leave the opponent's chances to make errors or not to achieve difficult things, and I think that Hammer's doing the same, that you've got to hit if you're going to survive. So Ben has this probably final chance. 23 yards. Looking interested? What do you 
Yes, oh. Oh, what a fantastic effort. What a fantastic effort. Absolutely on the nose. And against the odds, he has and it's no messing around. He's going to get, he's going to go for it. He's two games to one up. He feels he can afford it, um, and he wants to finish this 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 way as well. And he has run a few brilliantly clean long hoops. But this is his first World Championship final. And as I say, this is not practice, this is for real. Nope, pulled off the left and has bounced quite a long way. Um, now Ben will have to recover himself. He must have been, I think, half expecting that was it, but it's not. And indeed, he now has a chance. And with black where it is relative to red, I can't tell whether he's blocked or not, because if he is, then all he has to do, in one sense, if he doesn't want to try the same shot himself, is take Take, take close position and leave Mohammed to do the jump, which is, that's I think what must be the case. He's just played down to, yep. So I can only assume that by the chance of where black came to rest after hitting yellow so wonderfully centrally, it's actually managed to block black, block red. And so now red. So what he may be doing here is stop clearing this and hoping that yellow will, will clear blue. Ah, we having a jump here? Here we are. He's going for the jump. Missed that, is that completely? <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> Manages to run four, but that's not much help. He missed 13 on the left. And now, literally, all Ben has to do to win this game is to place black into position wide from red, which should not be very difficult. It does seem to. Ah, now that is a bit careless because. What this now offers is the double clearance opportunity to yellow. Literally, if Ben had held that ball back by a foot, certainly two feet, um, red couldn't have seen black and yellow couldn't have done anything about black. But now there is at least a real chance that if Mohammed catches black on its left hand cheek, Yellow will ricochet across and clear blue as well. So we might have yet another twist in this rather gripping 13th hoop. Well, he's got rid of one. There will be a 23 yard roque required. And it looks for all the world as if at least one hoop, if not two, are in the way.
Here it comes. Oh, caught the hoop. Caught the hoop. Well, people's frame of minds can change on all, for all sorts of reasons. And maybe Ben now thinks it is his day after all. Six three down has a two foot hoop. The seven six win and two all in the final of the World Championship. Yeah. I'm going to pee.
Well, we're going to start the fifth and final game. Fascinating to know what the players are feeling. Mohammed will be feeling that he really had the title in his grasp, but it slipped. Uh, ben hauled himself back. He can be called Harry Houdini. And that shot from down by four, which center balled yellow and left red blocking red was just one in a hundred one in five hundred and yet it it did the trick and when Mohammed missed his seven yard hoop chance uh, it gave better an opening so let's see what happens red's gone into three yards south a little bit to the east perfectly adequate hoop hoop shot First decision for Ben, is he going to try and clear this immediately or go behind? He looks as if he's thinking of a clearance. This could be as much about making a statement to his opponent as the tactics. And just misses on the left. Again, no attempt to block, just bringing it into position perhaps four and a half yards back. <laughs> and now a second go with blue this time, trying to clear red from what is a very plausible hoop running position. Again, more or less carbon copy of the first, indeed it hit black on the boundary. And first blood to Mohammed, uh, not all that far up the court, so Ben will have reasonable hopes of putting in black to good position and then hope then perhaps covering it with blue so that red won't be able to shift it. Now uh, the blue and black are on exactly the same spot, so the ball that is next to play is correctly placed and blue is moved away so it doesn't interfere. Hopefully it's not going to interfere with proceedings. Black's not bad, it's um, three yards back. It has been sent in and is now a little closer to the hoop, slight angle. Now Ben's got to work out whether he's going to try and get closer than black or try and block red at black. Okay. Live again. Okay, 
so the block certainly hasn't worked so it's now red at black and the possibility of a 2-0 lead if he stops Ooh, that must have been a double just hits the right hand upright and spins back and around the hoop so Ben has no hesitation walks straight up to black Now, this is interesting. Two choices, jump it with yellow or clear blue with yellow and then hope that red will do the job on black. But black is quite a long way back. He may just be trying to squeeze him out of the hoop here. Nope, he's going for the jump. Unfortunately, doesn't doesn't get that one, and now Ben has a chance to repair the damage by peeling black with blue. Does that so it's one all as the rain begins to make its presence felt. But luckily, Will G is kindly holding up an umbrella for those of us on the exposed commentary position. In goes Red, quite tight to the hoop. That's um, hmm, two yards back, and almost dead in front. I think this needs two shots. gets enough of the left hand edge to send it past the hoop so that's uh, not a bad outcome for, for Ben so I have it puts yellow in well slightly beyond the hoop he went very close to it only about 18 inches back and he hasn't got position as a result so Ben just sends blue a good sensible four yard position almost straight and what is more i think wired from red by yellow which is an intelligent use of the enemy ball so i think he's got to block blue at the hoop with red and making use of red again uh, yellow sorry to block black at red but i'm not sure he succeeded i think that uh, I think he's got a clear yellow because yellow could perhaps sign me blue. He's asking permission if he can move it in a bit. unexpected clean miss from Ben from a range of just under seven yards he's been very good at those occasionally hitting them on the edge rather than the middle but he doesn't miss them completely now what can Mohammed do about this he has run some very angled hoops 
So you may well feel that the point's a point and he's not going to worry too much about not getting down the court. And yes, yeah, unfortunately for him, he obviously caught a bit of near wire, bounced across and came off the far wire. And I do not know whether Ben can... No, I think it's a jump here. Ben is clearly blocked from the hoop by red. And he has taken his low hold position. Has done some wonderful jumps this week, so this would not be a surprise if it goes through and goes through well all the way down to the <laughs> He got too much height on that. Hit the crown, came 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 down, and now Hammer is calling the referee. These shots are perfectly possible. You have to hit very sharply down, and he may well feel he needs a referee to make sure that, that the strike is fair. And he wants he wants the hoop firmed, firmed up. I mean, this is one of these interesting situations where any one of uh, three outcomes is possible. <laughs> one is that you peel successfully and you leave blue where it is, and you score the point. Another is that you. Uh, push, you drag blue through as well as passing through the hoop yourself, in which case blue gets the point because it is nearer to the hoop at the start of the stroke. And the third is you make a complete lash up of it and you just hit blue down towards four and you stay in the hoop or even worse attached to one of the uprights. But uh, the Egyptians are very experienced at this and I cannot see him not giving this enough downward. Yes. Very interesting way of doing it. He actually dropped down on top of the ball and kicked blue backwards and then off that. He wasn't going to go through on his own. Bounded forward and has run the hoop by about six inches. Uh, all one can say is that red will have a won't have a huge range of fire. He'll have to stick the mallet through the hoop and send it straight down towards four. So important for Ben that he gets this into position and looks to have done it very well indeed. That is, yep, good shot, two yards, bang in front of four, which from the west boundary, a range of 25 yards is good going. And it looks as though Mohammed recognises his inability to do much about that with red, so he's now taking on a 21 yarder with yellow trying to either clear black or perhaps run the hoop. Now it misses just on the left. is also somewhat circumscribed by the proximity of the hoop, but he just comes down well short of four and a little bit to the east. And there's no messing around from Mohammed, he just plays out to the east penalty spot. Didn't even look to see whether he can get his mallet through, through, through the hoop. And Ben gets the hoop to two all, and with enough jaws, enough wire to hold it within a yard of the hoop, which means he have a relatively short clearance. And this is one of the these are the three pivot points of a game of GC between four and five, six and seven, and between ten and eleven. And this is where the game could 
be heavily influenced, and that is only a seven yard, or perhaps seven and a half yard of for for um, black and yellow. And although Mohammed has run some very good angled hoops, that is certainly thirty degrees off this straight. Well, it's a good position for blue, providing he doesn't cut yellow onto it. It's one reason why it's all a good idea to put your own ball yard behind the other ball so that that eventuality is more or less removed. Anyway, first pivot point clearance for Ben. Seven and a half yards, black to clear yellow. And that's a great shot. Not hit at enormous pace. He hasn't got yellow all the way to the boundary, but it's only about five feet short. And he's held black within reasonable range of hoop five. Although if yellow collects blue well, then he'll have another long shot himself to clear to prevent red having a crack at the hoop. Well, that was in some ways one of the first tests of Mohammed's state of mind since his the disappointment he must be feeling about not converting a 6-3 lead in the fourth into a title-winning <coughs> performance. Now, it looks as though he's going to go 3-2 down, and Ben is close enough that he should be able to run this up to the peg and the hoop. He's done exactly that. That's a great shot. He is within two and a half yards of six, slightly off a straight line. Great shot. Really gives him a huge chance to... Hammond hasn't tried to hit him directly. He's just come up just alongside, but not stopping him running the hoop. I can't see any reason for Ben not to bring black up. Now, one possibility is just bringing up alongside blue. And there's a split available, clearing red to the side boundary, and blue coming over to in front of seven. Of course, that risks red then clearing black, in which place you look an idiot. But if you convert a 3-2 lead when you were 2-1 down into a 5-2 lead, that is significant. But first things first, he has to get Black into a position where it's in good hoop running position and won't be affected by this possible ploy of splitting red away to the east and bringing blue to the west. And he's gone for, I think it was a block preventing yellow hitting blue, but it hasn't succeeded. He's a good two foot short of what he needed. So Mohammed from about 23 yards. Oh, what a shot. Oh, yes, what a shot. What a shot. It's the sort of outcome that the word game changer was invented for.
better than missing. He has prevented Red from running the hoop. And Mohammed will do very well indeed to keep Red within a yard of Black's position, even if he hits absolutely on the on the nose. So this hoop has gone neutral, as, as I say. It's Very difficult to do better than that. He's now some nine yards from the hoop. Perfectly good distance for clearing black, but black can now take position and ask him the question. And then Ben is much keener on trying to get blocks than Mohammed seems to be. So I have no doubt that blue will be sent to try and cover red and black. And of course will take position itself if it succeeds anywhere close to doing that. And it's played in very gently. Ah, oh, now that might make it quite difficult for red to clear black. Um, that's just gone a fraction too far. I think he can always see a bit of black, but it will be the right hand edge. Realised that there's something well worth having a look at here. He's walking over. This might even precipitate a long range attempt at six by red. Well, the one thing you don't do in this situation, if that's the case, is to disturb things. Or you might put an extra ball in to try and make the block even more complete. Which I think is what he's aiming for. Oh, well, that's probably pretty good. That looks, uh, yep, I don't think how it makes a small gesture. I think it's his choice is uh, running the hoop or running the hoop. Catches the left hand wire. Doesn't go offside though, which could be useful. So, no funny business with yellow, he's just going to take his hoop and lead 4 2 if he gets it. shot if you're not completely comfortable. Start again. Smoothly done. Rothman leads 4-2 in the fifth. Well, with red right alongside black by about five feet or six feet and playing beforehand are some blocking possibilities, and that's a very good yellow. That's two yards due north, fraction west. Ben may well have an eye for what red can do to black, and may decide that he's got to clear it. I think that's what he's doing.
just shaves past on the left. One thing at Southwick, you're certainly going to get a sound medley. We've had light aircraft, some with an annoyingly shrill engine. We've had trains bashing past and the players cope extremely well. Now Mohammed's coming in with the red and has decided to go close to the hoop, so he has position twice. And I can't imagine Ben can see more than the right-hand side of yellow. Might be wrong, but it's a good side to hit. If he does, he'll take the ball a long way away from the hoop. But of course, his ball will come over to the west boundary and be in no position to run. And that was something of a shank to the left. He was clearly going for, for yellow, and he actually managed to miss red, which was somewhat to the left of his line towards yellow. But he leads 4-2. Mohammed has a two-yarder, two-and-a-half-yarder. How smoothly can he run it? Great shot, great shot. That is something. Uh, even then, he played such a lovely shot that it's gone sailing five yards past. When it went through the hoop, I thought he got it absolutely perfectly, but no, these courts are beautifully fast. They reward good touch, and um, this has given Ben a bit of a lifeline to rebuild a two-stroke lead if he can drop this into the wide position from the north boundary. Now that's going to take the slope and that's going to be what it's also a little strong that wouldn't have been a, mm, that's almost level with the hoop and it's wide open to yellow so the hammer will uh, learn from what happened to yellow and he's stroked it down and that's to within three and a half four yards and has drifted to about four feet to the east. Ben has no option, he feels, but to come down and join the party. The ball doesn't turn as much and stops almost, well, not quite due, due north, but four yards due north. But if Mohammed does his stuff, Blue's going to be on the north boundary in the next few seconds. Well, he gets it, but it's a snick, and blue goes to about three yards beyond the west penalty spot. It's therefore leaving something like a 12-yarder at red. And yellow has gone as far away from everywhere that it could, a yard outside third corner. So this could be quite an important moment. If he clears this and red misses black, but Ben rebuilds 5-3, five, five, you must say it's his advantage. If he misses this, it goes to, to four all. Much harder to say. And, well, this is another neutral hoop now because he's only got red to seven yards away from black. But one can't see either ball being anywhere close to the by the time the shot has been played. Uh, he too is not, not happy, so restalks. Goes through his routine again. Cast a little bit, 
shuffles up to the ball, puts the mallet down, and then slides the hands down. And this is there we go. Now that is potentially quite significant. He has been so good at those since game one when he was clearly not feeling fully confident. Shooting has gone better and better. And that is a poor miss by his standards. the hoop. No one would have to say, just looking at the striking by both players, leaving aside Ben's it's rather strange miss in front of seven, he ran that hoop extremely smoothly. Um, that's a 5-3 lead. And this first shot is coming down from near third, third corner. So it would be a great shot if it's closer to the hoop than three yards. Oh, that's probably four yards, so give him eight out of ten for lagging so accurately from well over 30 yards. Ben is taking the view that any ball in front of the hoop is no friend of his, so blue is going to clear yellow immediately. Again, this may be as much about a statement to the opposition as to the pure tactics. But clearly, if he hits it, he gains in that he removes the advantage that the first player to a hoop has. Nope, he else misses on the, on, the, on the right. His usual very steady shooting, nothing flashy. Very repeatable routine. Another good ball then, but again, no attempt to do any blocking. This doesn't seem to play part of his game at all. enough he's snicked yellow to about a yard to the east of the hoop so how about now to decide what he's going to do and this time nope that's just another two balls in front happy with that trust that the opponent will eventually miss which given Ben's form is not necessarily assured Solid clearance with red going to below eight and blue to below five. One of the long Southwark trains rumbling past there. Fortunately, they don't have the habit of Australian train drivers of sounding their horns when they see croquet players. Back comes red to ex almost exactly where it was before, three yards south.
So, black at yellow from just over seven yards. If it misses, yellow has a pretty easy hoop and a chance to get up to hoop 10. And he does miss. This match is not over by any means. Yep, and that's a good control. This is stopping short. It's a lovely shot. It's come up to within three and a half yards of 10, 5 4 to Ben Rothman, but Mohammed Karam has run nine up to 10 and held position on the playing side of the hoop. And I think that is sufficiently serious for Ben for him to think about trying to clear yellow immediately with blue. A range around about 18 yards from just south of five. Just missing on the right, not by much, but it doesn't really matter how much you miss by. Yellow is still there looking firmly at hoop 10. In comes red. Slightly closer, three yards back from the hoop. But certainly not blocking yellow's path to the hoop. This is presumably black at yellow, 22 yards or so, no more than that actually, 23 yards. Again, no slugging, just strokes it across and no just misses on the left this time. Well this is boiling up into a real climax because This should be five all if Mohammed gets. Ah, oh, he's trying something gentle. He is interesting. Decided not to go for what I suppose was a slightly uncertain hoop. It's just moved yellow, but I don't think it's anything's wired from anything, so. The risk here is that if um, blue hits red on the right hand cheek, it could end up not too far away from 11. A bit like that, really. So, in a sense, black shot at yellow is very free because of yellow, yellow could jaws, of course, but otherwise, um, the blue is all over 11, can get really good position. Now, 
then what Ben does have to watch out for is if he clears yellow softly. It can't run the hoop, but it can certainly clear blue. So he wants to be careful as to, if he is going to hit this, he needs to hit it fairly firmly. Oh dear, and such, well, same dynamic applies. What I th would not be surprised though if you see Mohammed simply jaws here. He does not want blue to be that close. And what's more, with red slightly to its east, he could always peel it and Not bothered. Of course, blue is going to take position anyway. And if it was the clearing board, it was black, which was clear close, that would be a totally different matter. But Ben is now going to take close position, and it's going to come down to whether or not. Yep. Now this does put pressure on, on Mohammed because if blue is allowed to run from there, the odds of a seven-five win to Ben become quite high. Is interestingly, and a lot of people I think would have thought about trying to do a controlled clearance on blue because the threat is so great. So, this championship is going to come down in effect to one 12 yard row came in the sense that if it's missed, you'd have thought Ben Rothman was a firm favourite to win both 11 and 12. And he, in his turn, has now got the opportunity from the eastern penalty spot to put black in about two feet to the northeast of blue and block that shot. It's coming in now, not looking too bad. Has it got the legs? No, it's just short. So Mohammed now has, I say, a 12 yard broker. If he clears it, if he hits this really well, and blue misses red, then red although it's a bit further away than blue, might be able to run down and again dominate the 12th. There'll be some noise from the Egyptians if this hits. No, that could be it. Ooh, from the crowd. thinking that he was unwise to leave blue so close to the hoop when he could have jaws and it was not going to be easy for that to be jumped. But anyway, Ben now has this chance to run from less than two feet and go down to 12. That's exactly what he's done. He's... Oh, well, two yards less and the match is over. This now gives Karam the chance to drift down into wide position. We could we could really have another 13th hoop thriller. That may just have gone out. That may have taken a bit of slope and I think he can be seen by red and if that is true, that is huge. Yeah, it looks wide open from, from the other camera. So in comes black, and this could be the ball which scores the winning point, unless Mohammed comes up with 
something really good now. Well, he's chosen to play and to have a ball in play. open and it's in doing his normal normal stalk. Yeah, that's just what he wanted, absolutely in the middle. Again, not snogging at it, just simply hitting it firmly. I would say that was quite a bit of nearer us actually, but Ben's got the point. Yep, well done. I don't think there was a wire involved, but uh, so. This is a 22 yard shot. Either on the hoop or clear black. <clears throat> this has been the most incredibly close match. Nothing to separate these players except a few random elements. black by a whisker on the on the right and went through the gap between the ball and the hoop. So ben will now walk up and has I would say a two and a half foot hoop almost straight to win the fifth game 7-5 and become the 2019 golf croquet world champion. Range to just have on. Hello, can you hear me? Can I walk across here to give this to Tudor? Yeah, legal. You're on I, air. I do the How do comebacks you... like Stephen. Yeah. It just oh, come back you... like Stephen. How do you feel? Elated. <laughs> I'll uh, bet. I, I feel great. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, a big moment for, for me personally, uh, American Croquet, my Uncle Larry, my sister Mara. Uh, it's, it really feels fantastic. <laughs> great. Key moment. What do you think turned it? Uh, hoop five in game five. Well, what turned it was I gave up on watching my casting somewhere in game four and uh, took four hoops to really get on and then I, I kind of entered the zone once I fixed what I was doing wrong and stopped watching where I was casting and just focused on uh, casting over the ball and watching the ball and um, I really started hitting everything. Well the key which... one, from the commentator's point of view when you hit that shot before 13 in game four which did well, two things. You cleared him and you also blocked red. It was it was fantastic. Uh, that was, I think, hoop nine it started. I cleared him from the north boundary. And that was after I had spent four hoops changing my methodology on a lineup. 
And once I was able to make that 100 foot clearance, I knew that I had fixed it. And from hoop nine on in game, I guess four was it, uh, it was on. So, uh, so well, great. very well done. We just want to, we want to do the interview behind the, with the, uh, the little interview board. Sure, we'll put it sure. It. And we can also grab Mo. Mohammed, bad luck. Very well played. There was nothing between you at all, and you would have been a very worthy winner. Yeah, no, very well played. We've got world champions on this one, so you've got to sign as well. Oh, really? AC, come yeah. on. Got a signature? We've got the Clark, we've got Paddy in there. On the ABGCA, Stephen. <laughs> that was a stint on the commentary, wasn't it? Oh, God. <laughs> no one volunteered to take over. Say thank you.
the harder job. Uh, I think yeah. you can just have a quick chat with Mo first and then yeah. Ben. Is that right? Yeah. Sure. Do you want to switch to the camera? I'll switch over. Be because Cody came back. Um, can you turn off the HDMI mix into here so it's just running off Stephen's camera? Hold on, Ben. Thank you. We're just, we're just, this is just a quick interview for the YouTube channel and just to say first of all very well played you had a magnificent match uh, when you ran hoop nine in game four from that incredible angle it looked all over and yeah and no that's golf trophy for you you can never tell what happens and I mean did you feel that the first game, I thought you were not feeling very well. Yeah. Then you got better and better. Yeah. I don't feel uh, my, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. my shots and my swing. I, I lost my swing. But you got it back again. I got I, it back in the second, from yeah, the second yeah. game. I think that's very important. For a great player can repair themselves during a match. It's no good saying, it's not working, I'm finished. But you, you fought back. And I mean, if he missed that long, long shot at the end, yeah. you'd have been the winner but very fine margins but you must be pleased with the with the week as a whole i know you haven't won but you've played really well the semi-final yesterday was magnificent yeah. you beat hammy who is a very fine fine player and i think what was great about that he managed to win the third with quite a lucky jump yeah. shot you were not upset yeah. you came back and you won by seven three so a really brilliant win yeah, yeah. so Two years time? Um, yeah, I am very tiring and uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I am very uh, not feeling uh, good. Well, yeah. that happens. But two it's years close. time? Two years time? Yeah. Your turn then, perhaps. You've uh, proved so yourself to be a great player, and uh, it was great watching you play. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, man. Do you want to give a shout out to anyone here? معلش انا اسف عملت اللي عليا بس ما قدرتش اكمل لحد الاخر يعني كل حاجه بتوفيق ربنا الحمد لله ما عنديش حاجه اقولها اكتر من كده غير ان انا كان نفسي اكسب وشكرا لوالدي ولاخواتي ولكل الناس اللي وقفت جنبي ودعيت لي بس لسه مش دلوقتي هي اكيد ليها وقت تاني هيحصل فيه ان شاء الله ثانك يو Sorry. Ben. I have to detach Cody from me. Well, I've got students in a mute to mute himself. No, 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 no. So, do you want me to mute or on that? Yeah, if you mute that, I'll just walk on it. Yeah. Oh, now you're on mute. I held that. Will, can you hear? No. Do your best Howard Cosell impersonation. Wait for the sound 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 to get back. Oh yeah. No. You know, if I slink to the background, you look taller. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to use this. This is a very. It picks up everything. Mine, but all mine. Ah, wow. Well. <sighs> Two good comebacks. Again, the, the, the Mulliner method. You first you tire him out, it's the old rope a dope, and then you show him your old man's stamina. That's right. <laughs> and you get plenty of value for money, too. And your back starts <laughs> tightening up, so you have to walk around between games and stretch a bunch, and crack your back. You doing, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a long two days of, of back work. This one? Yeah, just work with that one. Okay, Ben, well, congratulations. You've managed to come back twice. Quite an achievement. You were 2 0 down in the semi final, playing Josh Reith, who was playing fantastically. You got off to a good start in the third game and pulled it back from that. How are you feeling after the third game of this, this match when you managed to get the first game, but then Mo was clearly playing a great deal better? What were your feelings then? Uh, I felt like I needed a good lag to start game four and to see if I could outlast his hitting prowess because he was making everything, including some angled hoops that I had wagered against. Uh, and so I knew I had to get to another level hitting and hopefully get him to uh, back off of his very high hot streak. And then that game progressed and frankly, um, 
it was looking less and less good from your point of view, and when he finally addressed what looked like an extremely angled hoop nine, and got it, and got it by three or four yards as well, 6-3 down, what were your thoughts then? Uh, well, I knew I had to play a little aggressive, so um, not only did I need good position at 10, but I had to play for position at 11 and such. Uh, I think the same thing happened around 12, where I didn't like the ball positions, so I actually waited to shoot 12 and took position again, uh, knowing that he wasn't going to lag up and give me a, a way to flick down to 13 or anything, but I just wanted to make sure he was coming from the side to 13 and that I had a decent shot at him. Uh, and I was, I was feeling like I had gotten online with my shooting, so I thought if I was within 20 yards, uh, I had a good chance of competing for hoop 13. Yeah, he put in a really good lag with his yellow, and then you missed. You could tell he didn't want to have any risk of interfering with his yellow, which he thought was the winning ball, so he played red right off the boundary, and then you produced... Um, exceptional roquet that not only cleared into the boundary but actually your ball stopped and this time it was as well that it did because I think it blocked red from the hoop didn't it? It did. Um, so that was a bit fortunate. Uh, the The idea of hitting his ball at all to make his shot at 13 harder was the only goal I had in mind but uh, one of one of the things I've taken from watching this tournament uh, when it was here in 2011 with Mark McInerney was that it's not about hitting the ball as hard as you can and clearing both off the lawn, although sometimes I wish I did. Um, <laughs> but if you can get center ball and keep your ball in useful positions, you, you can really uh, you know, parlay that into a better fight for the hoop. And this was uh, an exceptionally long example of that, that because I don't crush the ball, my ball did not go off the lawn, which actually allowed me to, once he missed the seven yarder, allowed me to play for a strategic two balls a yard in front of the yep. hoop a no pressure hoop 13 which is uh ha i had yet to have in this tournament a no low pressure hoop 13 attempt so well and then we moved on to on to game five which was talk about ebbs and flows you got the first break he came back and then it looked as if when he ran through nine up to ten i was surprised that he didn't jaws with the yellow because you had blew so close to, to to 11. The risk was you'd be able to score two, really two two hoops if he if he missed. And I think if he had jaws, you were a bit too far away to make the jump with 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 blue feasible. feasible. Is that fair? Um, I I don't quite remember. I think it was black that could have made a jump. Blue was the one over by 11, so it was too angled to do any sort of jumping. But uh, the fact that he didn't jaws, we had we had had a lot of uh, bad luck with the middle of hoops when playing gently. Yeah. They weren't uh, easily jawsable today, although after five games they may well have been. So I wasn't surprised, but when he made it to the line I knew had, I had an opportunity to really put the pressure on with that nine to ten yard clearance from the north boundary at 11. I thought he would clear me with red is what I yeah. assumed. Yeah. Um, otherwise I thought he might have made hoop ten with less pace. Um, and so it really kind of allowed, uh, he, he really kind of put the pressure on himself there. And I was, I was fortunate that um, he, he was not shooting as accurately as he had earlier. Well, then, I mean, you managed to close it out and that was a superb win. So many congratulations. Thank you. And yes, you certainly made your country proud. So. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Morford Mallets. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks very much, Ben. I think you're needed over there. So I'll just move this over. Should we just quickly close off yeah. and say, right, thanks very much, Stephen, for doing some great work on the commentary work. And uh, we're going to move over to the um, closing ceremony now. So we're going to end the broadcast and we're just going to record the closing. So thanks very much for tuning in, especially if it's your first time watching Croquet. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Okay, cheers.
And so too, as Jonathan said, fantastic final, um, a really hard one to lose, I'm sure. Uh, but the runner-up was Mohamed Karem of Egypt. <laughs> Who gets a silver medal. And finally, from 6-3 down, I think, 2-1 down in games and 6-3 down in the fourth, nobody ever doubted he would prevail, the comeback king himself, Ben Ruffman, and 2019 World Golf Croquet Champion. Don't disappear, there's one more. All right. And thank you guys. Right. Thank you for everything. Well thank you. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Okay. One final thing we have here. Can I ask Quilla to step up, uh, who's going to say something to Amir, I believe? Oh, well, 
ladies and gentlemen, as Amir uh, has already told you, he is standing down as president of the uh, WCF after eight years of being president, my word. Uh, he has successfully navigated uh, the World Federation, and I'm sure you'd like to join me in giving him a well-rounded round of applause. <laughs> I, I would also just like to say something to the players, if I may. Could the players please remember when they started playing croquet? I'm sure uh, that all of you, whatever country you come from, had a coach or coaches and a mentor or mentors who helped you on your way to this very elevated position that you've got to now. Uh, I hope that you will continue uh, to give this help, particularly to young rapid improvers in your countries, so that when we come to the next World uh, Championships, it will be just as competitive and across the generations as this one has been. Thank you. Okay, Quilla, Quilla, we have a mentor from the top for Andy. Oh, right. Ambir is getting something special. It's a glass. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, one final thing to do as uh, retiring host is to um, give the next event to New Zealand. So, our Richard Bilton here, and I believe. Hang on. Uh, is it Joshua Freeth for New Zealand? Yes. Okay. Is Richard here? Yes. By the flag. Ah, right, okay. <laughs> this hasn't been rehearsed, I believe. No. <laughs> <laughs> It'll work. So, on behalf of the host, the Croquet Association, the best of luck to Croquet New Zealand with the next edition. Okay. <laughs> Gonna do a few wins for you. Well done, guys. Uh, well done. And that's it. Hopefully, see some of you in New Zealand. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. Well done. Yeah. I'm here. Oh, lovely You'll probably have moved again by the next time I see you. Oh, probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well done, Ben. Well done, Ben. Brilliant. Well done. Thank you, Mike, for all your work. Nice jacket. <laughs> yes. No, oh, thank you for talking about it. Yeah, that's right. We'll play double. Oh, no, I would say snap, but I don't really want to take it back. Thank you. Can I have a picture? Thank you. Of course. Please. Thank you. I think I've got it. Might be lucky. <laughs> 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 <laughs>